talking about it on Grinch's stream earlier this morning. Um, they topped it with Sunraven. Like, there's nothing that they could release at this moment in time that I feel is going to top the value of Sunraven in terms of you get first strike and rebound damage. So, you know, in that sense, they really need to uh, not be pushing the price for $2,000 pieces of gear that, you know, the set bonus isn't really that great and is going to top again, it the just value doesn't of Sunraven. If you're spending $2,000 on a piece of gear, you might as well get Sunraven, right? Like, you might as well. 100%. No, 100%. <clears throat> uh, well, we are live. Welcome. Oh, that whole rant wasn't... Okay. No, no, half of that rant was. Half of that rant was. Just uh, not <laughs> so, all of it. But... <laughs> they, got, they got the second half of my rant against 7P. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, if you're watching and you missed it, I was talking about how... The new gear, like, realistically, the only piece that's, like, I would see really wanting to get is the infantry pants. And I don't even recommend getting the whole set. And if you're going to spend $2,000 on a piece of gear, you might as well get a Sunraven piece of gear. Because, um, again, like, I, I don't see them somehow topping Sunraven unless they come out with the gear that ignores rebound damage. That's the only thing I could think of that would be worth $2,000 in the game. I, Which I, I feel like a lot of it is just been overpriced as it is. I mean... Well, yeah, that too. I mean, they have not decreased the cost of Broken Fortress or FOMO. And they've been out two plus years now, right? And they haven't decreased the price of an Alcade. It's still fucking thousand bucks. Um, I mean, it was nice that they uh, gave out uh, the Marak in the last, you know, event for relatively cheap so uh if you were like me and you're you're free to play at the moment you couldn't get it which sucks because it was like eighty thousand gold to get uh the full blueprints from iraq <laughs> um but i thought that was nice that's the only gear that i've seen them actually devalue um and honestly i'm surprised they devalued it that that, that is very helpful for most infantry um uh, I was surprised that that was the item that they decided to devalue. And I think it's just because of the simple fact not a lot of people have it. Because the only way to really get it was through the Aether Shop. Uh, where you, sorry, the, the Aether Energy or whatever the whatever the fuck that thing is. You know you know what I'm talking about. The, yeah, the fucking shop the where... Aether Shop. Yeah, where it costs 300 Which up until recently, it, you know, as somebody who's been playing this game five plus years, like... I had been saving for almost two years straight and barely had a hundred. Um, oh yeah, and that 100%. was with me, like doing every single event and getting every single little one I could get. After two years, I didn't even have a hundred. Um, so I mean, I understand it from that aspect because that's really the only way you could get it. Um, I think there was one event last year where you could get it, but outside of that, the only other way to get it was through the the other Aether shop. Um, so I'm glad that they devalued that and made it more widely available. That's going to help a lot of infantry, uh, especially if you're looking to build like infantry tank where you're building a Craig. Fantastic. They also had, uh, Craig's mechanical arms in the shop, uh, for relatively cheap. Uh, I think, no, I've seen it cheaper in like an event close to a year ago but this is the cheapest i've seen it in a little while um so that's nice so again th th this event seemed pretty uh you know geared towards um helping potential infantry um which you know that's nice um but again the the issue here is they're not devaluating you know the cost of their equipment and their equipment's just it, it, again, you can't you can't make new gear and then make it cost the same as Sunraven, and it still be shit. Like the set bonuses are ash cheeks. Um, especially you know air the air equipment got shafted on this. 
on the air equipment set like yeah it's okay but i mean reasonably speaking compared to the other two like the walker actually looks pretty solid and the infantry i'd say is the best out of all three of them but even then like you, you you're spending four thousand dollars for a two-piece gear set bonus that's not great if you're spending four thousand dollars you might as well spend that extra 2k and get the sun raven like if you have enough money to waste where you're getting right. four thousand dollars for a two set just go sun raven like it, it just makes so much more sense um especially for people who don't have sun raven like i understand if you already have sun raven like unless you're you know odad um or you know certain other whale entities that i'm not gonna name because i'm really tired um where you have multiple sun raven sets or need multiple sun raven sets like if you don't have sun raven and you're going for this new gear like what the fuck are you doing it's no offense but it doesn't make sense to me yeah no it doesn't and and the other side of that too is like this new gear is other than the infantry one i think it was it's like it's all worthless yeah well that, that's basically what i said like you know fucking uh realistically speaking out of you know the the other sets infantry is really the only one that's i would consider worth it and even then it's not worth four thousand dollars at best it's worth two thousand at that point if you look at that set's you know gear bonus compared to the butterfly wings and you know the shoes i would much rather pay two thousand dollars to get both of the butterfly wings and the butterfly shoes which are much better hands down yeah so why would if you're you're spending four thousand dollars for this set when you could spend two thousand get a much better set or if you're spending four thousand dollars just drop the extra two thousand and get the sun raven which is going to help you out so much yeah and so i mean again, if, this if, is... if it came down to if i was going to spend money on gear we're definitely not wasted on the new. I would mm -mm. definitely just go for a Sun Raven set. No, the only person, I, I, the only person that actually gets any benefit out of the the new infantry gear is Craig. I'm gonna be very honest. I looked at it and I poured into it, uh, but even then, it doesn't necessarily help because I mean, Craig's got to get hit. And with the dodge, is because I was I've been been messing around with Black Widow, trying to actually make her relevant, <laughs> and that set helps her because of the damage reduction from dodge and the dodge and all that. But it, at the same time, you know, you I know, will say that you know, keep in mind, but, I I say this pretty loosely because we all know it's it's rare for T11 infantry to dodge. Um, unless you're getting sweet, right? Like that—that's just basic concept. But with the new the new pants, I've seen it. I've seen it be very useful on, let's say, an Ira. Um, so I mean, I want you know. It, again, it's also you know uh, attributed to you know the arc user, how smart they are, how adaptable they are uh so on and so forth so don't just take what i'm saying as oh yeah this is the move to go um it's really it's not unless you know what the fuck you're doing like you gotta have specific gem sets you know specific formation like it's not just a oh yeah let me slap this on my ira and just one slot bust and it's gonna do its thing that that's not what it's gonna do you have to have the correct formation and everything um and the correct gems to make it work uh, oh absolutely and <clears throat> When, when they first came out, and most of us over at uh, SXD, we actually pretty much quit spending back in December. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it, we're still pretty decent, you know, but, you know, we're... With the way the game has gone uh, in the last probably two, three months... You know, we're we're like everybody else. We're kind of struggling through this, and we're like, do we really want to spend any more? No, I yeah. mean, honestly, I, you know, as somebody who's gotten Sun Raven, I I look at everything in the game right now, and I'm just like, really, it's not 
I, I don't really have a need to spend on anything else. I really don't. Um, like, I mean, sure, a Broken Fortress would be nice at some point, but I don't really need it. Um, a Lifesteal weapon would be nice, but, I mean, if you formation right, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, I mean, it, it's just kind of like, you know, uh, there's lots of wants, but, like, I'm looking at it more objectively now, and I'm like, I don't see anything that I actually need anymore. Yeah, and, as a, and as a puppet main, some of the, even Sunraven for me is even sketchy. You know, to even bother getting. And, and dumping the money into the game to get it because everything I fight for the most part are tanks anyway. So, right. if so you don't, if, I really you don't, don't really, need it. Yeah. And my backup commander is King. You know, yeah, it would be helpful, but I don't plan on meaning King forever because his level of relevancy ebbs and flows depending on the fight. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, Sunraven Ira is very fucking useful. Like, once yeah. I get her S class, I'm actually planning on swapping my Sunraven gear from black over to her and just running her. Um, I keep in mind that that also requires swapping all the gems and shit on it which i don't have a problem doing um yep. and i i'm waiting to get ruthless uh before i do that anyways because i still want like a sweet sun raven build on her uh so i was planning on doing ruthless getting a second sun raven weapon you know in time like i'm not gonna fucking rush that shit because i don't really need it it's more of a want and then I would run the butterfly plants, you know, and just have a shit ton yeah. of sweet with the Sun Raven. Um, which, you know, it's a very long term in game goal, but worst case scenario, I could just run the Sun Raven and, you know, just run fucking. I was playing on honestly running, you know, a puppet's weapon and just running a 50 quantum module because if they have no RWE, that'd be enough sweet, you know? Um, yeah. So that that I, I mean, Sun Raven on Ira, she's honestly one of the most adaptable comms in that regard. Compared to like, let's say a Sun Raven Black, you don't have much adaptability with that, or like even a Sun Raven DS, you don't have a lot of adaptability in that regard. Um, you know, unless you get the right pieces, like you could do the pants and dual weapons and like get ambition and do a Sun Raven tier suppression DS, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but go you. So, I mean, in terms of adaptability with Sunraven, Ira is going to be your best bet. Um, yeah. And in watching the playoffs, too, and that was something I was talking to uh, some of the guys over in uh, SXD in, in watching the counters for uh, uh, Zeth, <laughs> which was rather impressive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the guy, I, especially with T10 Ira, that was I. Oh yeah, insane. yeah. I, as soon as I saw that, I came back. I was like, guys, <laughs> T10 Ira. And yeah, they're, they're like smoke. What? I'm like, I'm not joking. I, I, I'm not kidding. Uh, T10 Ira uh, with some T12 tossed in for flavor. In, in depending well, on the setups and the cases, I'm like, you're not, gear, you're, not you need... tossing, you're tossing it in to avoid canes and other shutdowns. Yeah. 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 I found... but, but I told him, I was like, it's going to probably going to be expensive gear sets, but. Well, they... yeah, I mean, uh, almost all those I was were running, you know, Sun Raven and I believe um, they were running. Festival. Yeah, ru ruthless as well. So like either way, you're looking at a, at least a seven thousand dollars set to make that T10 Ira build compatible. Yeah, I mean not but, really. Well, you could probably do it with quantum module and a few other things, but uh, but I Sun was Raven, just... Sun Raven is just all right. But it's not as dominant as it was before. There's so many ways around it. No, but the only reason they made that work against those Zests who weren't running Sunraven because if those Zests had first strike, those Irons were fucked. Uh, no, I'm, I'm... They're not... Alright, so... 
if they're not running RWE or they don't have RWE gear, T10 walkers will sweep T12 walkers. Yes, although most of the Zess in that battle are running Ambition level 50 for both A, the Tear Suppression, and RWE. I really don't think they had as many TS builds as Raz was trying to make it seem like. No, they had two. They had If they had more TS Zeths, they would have taken care of the Iris. No, they only had two. But a decent portion of them had swapped to RWE Waken because they knew Ira was going to be running Sweet and that was going to be their main counter. Yeah. Which is then at that point when you need the Sun Raven. So again, it goes back to my main point where I said it's honestly all situational. It all depends on your awareness of the battle, your enemy's awareness of the battle. And honestly, it's just you play by ear. And once you figure out if they're running what they're running, then you just swap and adapt, which is why Ira is one, in my opinion, one of the most, you know, adaptable commanders right now. Definitely adaptable, still has her uses. But what about this Delaria? There were some uh, people thinking that she was going to be a thing, and I, I still haven't seen much out of her. You know, or anybody really. Uh, that's because they nerfed her to shit. You, you are behind. <laughs> this, this her? was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they made her skills not work the way that they're supposed to at all. Um, I was actually talking with Soul about this. I mentioned it on Grinch's stream a few times as well. Um, they did a shadow patch uh, about. Uh, two three weeks ago on her mm -hmm. and made her abilities to where it's supposed to be like stacking lifesteal kind of shit um you know because it had the multiplication for her counter move and it wasn't multiplying at all it was just uh even though it says it does it doesn't and so it basically got rid of one of her most effective mechan uh, mechanisms against zeth which was you know the extreme lifesteal and so it was supposed to go based off of your lifesteal and increase it. Now it just goes solely based off your lifesteal. Uh, so at this point, it's just a basic like counter move like you see in Mary. Um, and so because of that, that's what made her less viable. Um, because she was technically before this shadow patch, she was actually a Zeth counter. Oh, um, yeah. After it, after it, not so much. And I mean, she still does okay against Seth, but she typically, you know, I'd uh, based off the battles I've seen, even against Tivor, against you know, I'd say subpar to decent sex. Like it was like eighty percent chance that she lost. Like she traded relatively well, but she still lost. So even though it says like twenty percent of HP loss, airship takes less damage and life still is increased. It's not increasing. It's not increasing. No, it just acts as a basic counter move. Well, ain't that annoying? Yeah, it 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 is. Um, <clears throat> and of course, it happened right before our fight with TNB too. I <laughs> I would like to point that out. The early they shadow patched it two days before our fight with TNB. Yeah, because we were we were testing uh, Delaria extensively. We have a couple guys that, that run uh, their T10, uh, not T10, excuse me, H, uh, HP10 uh, uh, tanks, I mean, high-end tanks for air, and they were considering switching or adding them in, adding her into their lineup because they have enough uh, tank gear. And as soon as the shadow patch came out we kept on testing and all of a sudden she wasn't functioning the same and mm -hmm. her effectiveness dropped way low yeah i mean I, I i i it was being being a tank killer you know uh, in running sims you know yeah, I was, she, she were... dominated against like every other tank she actually dominated after the shadow patch she was like a wet paper towel dude she didn't do shit Oh yeah, in, in even running running puppet against her, I was getting smoked, 50-50 shot. And as soon as they patched her, I was blowing right through her like uh, like nothing. Yeah, like the, she went from being like uh, you know a really good tank killer to just nothing. Glad I didn't waste the money. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, to be fair, I was telling everybody, don't buy this bitch, even though she might be good because it's not worth the money. And 
you know, if any of you listen, good on you. You save yourself from, you know, massive I disappointment. Definitely was like, I am not paying the money to. I'm glad I didn't. Like normally, I'll just I'll shell out the hundred bucks to get the con at least a class so I can, you know, view it. But with it being with that with the you know it being you know basically fucked um why even bother you know yeah no i mean anything good that comes especially since she countered zeus so well they just nerf it like it's just like i get it you want to keep your golden child golden a little bit longer but like to just completely nerf the bitch after you know we had hope outside of ira is fucked in my opinion especially since you made it to get her s class two thousand fucking dollars the same cost as that to do that because again she was going to be a zeth counter and she was doing really good at it to have people spend close to two thousand dollars to get her s class and then to shadow nerf her and patch her to where she doesn't do shit to zeth is fucked up so the other thing I wanted to talk about wasn't that, but um, the talents. So we have this new tier four of talents, but they all have their own application. Mm -hmm. Makes it that they didn't they didn't project out there that you know hey this is only going to be usable if you put it towards this commander. I mean this uh, troop type. So yeah, like, yeah. What, what they want you to do is unlock all the troop types that way you have something for each one yeah because i mean like ether impact for example uh, ether impact plus only works with the tier other the the blue ones the, <laughs> the attack yeah the sages the hunks and the other gym. yeah and just to give you an idea what that looks like i do have a re replay but what this one does is if you don't produce the ether shield it doesn't mean anything because what that what that extra plug does is it puts a shield on everything in that row. Mm -hmm. And that goes forth to you know the rewind and the other the other ones. I think the only one that may not have a limit to it in terms of what uh, troop that you're using is going to be the battle overseer. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And the other one right behind it. Uh, what is it? Let me do this. So you can the defense for crit or something. I forget the name. Destructive strike. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Or? Battlefield overseer and destructive strike. I'm pretty sure are uh, able to do on both. Yeah, so I mean, with Destructive it. Strike, when a normal attack trigger is a crit hit, the defense of units in the same row as the target is reduced. And then you have Battle Overseer. Upon taking the first action, the skill trigger rate of the units in the same row as the Battle Overseer is increased until the end of the battle. So those two definitely, it doesn't matter. As, as the way I read it, but when you come into like rewinding glow, you have to have the time walker or whatever yep. other ones. I'm just drawing a blink on names. Mir uh, mirage and not mirage. Uh, mirage science or something else. Uh, Reaver? No. Yes. So Is Soul Reaver, no, 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 sorry. Time Walker, Galaxy Guard, and Cyan Shuttle. That's what Rewinding Glow is going to go towards. And then if you look into, again, with this Ether Impact Shield, again, that's going to be only your 12.2s, uh, which is going to be Sage, Old Hunk, Blue Hunk, and the Ether Degen. Which they have two for that one, it seems like. Unless, I mean, like, dealt damage by units with Aether Impact Shields. Well, actually, here, here was what... I'm pretty sure it, you can put 
you can use the either gen with the one that gives the shield to the whole row and then that other talent will be applicable on different troops because they also have a shield well yeah, that's that was thing, my though. that was my understanding yeah that's i'm pretty sure that's how it works because i i unlocked them and i'm um i don't i think i unlocked both let me check i'm sorry what was the question oh no i have either impact but if you put either i can do either impact shield let's test it right now i'll let you know well i was gonna say you know mav's a good person to ask about either impact because he's been testing that shit like relentlessly on his tank ds that he's got right now well here, here's the thing though it says dealt damage by units with aether impact shield is increased but you can only have this one on or the aether impact plus so you're either using the 12.2 troops or you're not to get that extra damage from aether impact yeah. shield but I mean, you're generally using either gen on attack comms anyway, so it doesn't hurt. And then it, it allows you to use, like, it allows you to be more versatile, I think, having that, having both of those troop types in it. Uh, at least if you're going for, like, a big battle against people your own size. And then if you're if you're using Origin a lot and you're using, you know, Ryan, Orochi, for specifically... I mean, the Terra Space Plus is going to definitely be a huge thing for you to do if you get onto that fourth level of my, um, plugins for the, you know, the doohickeys. Talents. Vocabulary. Gone, apparently. <laughs> Hippity hoppity, give me this hoppity. Yeah, something like that. But, um, I don't know. I, I'm tuned the fuck out. I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about the uh, talents. Oh, dude, the Terra Space Plus, fantastic. It does so much damage. God damn, do we got Darth Vader up in this bitch or some shit? Like, is it low deck? Uh, no. It's like Black Tiger. <laughs> Black Tiger, are you Darth Vader, bruh? Like, in disguise? No, that's my uh, Facebook uh, photo. I switched it over a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> mm. But yeah, Tear Space Plus, um, that has worked out really well so far. Um... The Overseer talent, very nice. Um, it's almost got my best offense trigger to 100%, um, which is also very nice, clearly. Um, so I've been using that on my IC troops, which has helped a lot. Okay, um, I can see that. Uh, yeah, because even at just level 2, it gives 8% of your overall trigger back. So right now I'm at 81%, and so it's 8% of that after the first action, so it brings it up to 90%. And, I mean, if I got, you know, my chest to um, level 50, it should be relative, like 93%, 94%. Something like that. But that does it stack, or does it just add? It's only it's only one time that triggers, right? So never mind. So it's only that one time it triggers. Yeah, it doesn't stack. But I mean, at level two, it's like sixteen percent or something. Sorry, level three is sixteen percent. So I mean, it doesn't stack. But honestly, all you need is for it to activate once because I uh, I think at max level it's like twenty or thirty percent. Gotcha. So it's pretty pretty decent. I mean, if you only have a skill that's forty percent trigger, and then you know even with trigger gear you're getting at like sixty percent. Like you know thirty percent of that is still fucking you know eighteen percent increase. That's going to get you to seventy eight percent. You know. That's much better than 60. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 
I mean, the other side of this too is the rewinding low. So think about it if you have the <clears throat> plugin for walkers that does the HP give back, which is, was it power? <laughs> it's not power. healing field. So if you have healing field from walker plus rewinding glow plus the healing time walkers like that's just broken well i mean that's why walker does so good against sun raven um or uh fuck i was talking about this literally earlier this morning there was somebody that like did really well with it um Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's why Zath is so damn tanky. Um, and why he beats literally every other tank, because he has heal on top of the heal, especially if he has a lifesteal weapon on, too. Like, it's fucking insane. Yeah, I just, I feel like if, if Reggie, if you're still watching... <laughs> Elf is not Bay. Don't even go down that road. Um, here's, here's, your, here's your healing build here. You need a healing field, the time walkers, uh, the, yeah, time walkers and rewind, rewinding glow, and there you go, you'll be set. <laughs> no, elf still gets one shot. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if she has heals if she gets one shot in the first fight. Like, sorry, the first round. True. True, you're not wrong. But going back, let me see if I pull these up real quick. Hold on. Ah, Black Tiger. Let me pay the money so, buddy. A lot of background noise going on. Bro, taking that Darth Vader roleplay a little too far, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Even the motherfucker chuckled too, he knows. <laughs> oh, I didn't want that to open there. Fuck. You know what I didn't want to open? My brain. My brain's fried. You have one of those? <sighs> Not right now, I don't. There we go. Not right now, I don't. Is Reggie ever coming back? Like, Homie said he was, like, quitting, quitting streaming. And, like, is he actually done streaming? Or, like, is this... You know, like one of those four month break periods, and then he comes back. Uh, Probably like a four month period. I don't know. He's watching the stream right now. Like Reggie, I'm a, I'm a need an answer. He's and to your elf comment, he said, "I can always eat her into Seth." Good man, smart man. So so back to back to the whole new uh new suits here like so you have vortex dark dark surge infantry units take less than 20% damage the higher their dodge is the less damage they will check take check your sound yoda check my sound <clears throat> make me go on on my phone here just to see so yeah you had a uh, looking looks like from my testing that shield will be applied to the whole row and then say that again the damage will increase on that second troop penis that also gets the shield <laughs> Anyways, so with this though, it's saying it's all based on dodge, okay? So the question is, how much dodge are you getting from them, and how much is it going to take to get? Them? So you're getting sixty percent, and nothing dodge-wise from the pants. <clears throat> to where you'd have to rely on what butterfly blades to get extra dodge in terms of a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So I don't think I Or the truth, but that doesn't really do you much. You can't honestly I have the I have dual truths on my mysterious warrior. 
Even at level 30, it dodges. Okay. And only Hyperspace 5, you know, research. Like, and that's with me using T11. It dodges. Don't get me wrong, I have a literal shit ton of dodge on my build. But it dodges. No, uh, I mean, dual, dual truths and, like, let's say, red pupil, mm -hmm. fire pants, vix, uh, void. Like, you can stack quite a bit of dodge. I showed well, you my build, right? That I have on him right now? Yeah. Because that, that's basically what I'm running. Well, this would, this would be to get to the, the having the two to get the special effect or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you can stack quite a bit of fucking dodge on infantry. Mm-hmm. A lot. Well, actually, now I'm looking at it. <laughs> the truth isn't bad at all. So I guess the suit effect is 20% less damage, 60% 60 damage reduction based on your dodge. So you'd have to run so test of hands. You also need to take into account all the all the dodge buffs in Awakening too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question if it even counts that. Because I, I sat down with Sir Allington and we were just crunching numbers, going back to the Truth uh, Red Pupil uh, Void <laughs> build, and you're pushing over two thousand dodge on that build. So if you go to uh, the vortex and in you're still running two truths and a red pupil and you have maxed out uh infantry research on dodge and you know this is assuming hyperspace you're pushing over 2000 on dodge you can actually dodge uh even the most accurate of uh black builds which so are running right around dodge Fire mm -hmm. Awaken. So yeah. the one thing you can't dodge, Fire Awaken. <laughs> no, you can't. True. But the thing is, is if you're running infantry and you're and you have still have half a brain cell, uh, you're still one slot busting most everything. Yeah. Because Fire Awakening, with as squishy as infantry is, you're you're dead in the water. So you're gonna run. Uh, you're either gonna run a ranger in slot one and max uh, troops in slot two, or vice versa. Unless you're running uh, Craig and you're tanked out. So, but then if you're running a pre going going back to the mechanical warrior build, because I've seen a couple of those, uh, you can still do something very similar to it and stack out dodge. And do your lockdown build that way, but I like triple axe for it. Triple oh, axe tri blades. Tri triple axe is, is half yeah, broken. Dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's <laughs> he's he ramps better than Sister Wolf with power shot. Oh, you you have no so I actually run triple axe on mechanical puppet. Yeah, it's it the damage increases. Not is... all that trigger rate. I oh yeah, it. I mean, when I when we were fighting TMB and I was blowing through their tanks, that's it was because of triple axe. They weren't running Kane's Kane's preemptive builds, and I was just blowing right through them. Hey, anybody played Dragon's Dogma yet? The new one. Mm -mm. Not yet. The new what? The new Dragon's Dogma. No idea what that is. <clears throat> Dragon's Dogma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> well the other side of this too is I have jump servers oh yeah I am now on 780 even though I'm not in EXE but it's fine 
Hey, man, I'm only I'm stuck here for 30 days. We'll see how it runs. I'm judging you. You can judge me all you want. I got the Sky Kingdoms and I'll put you on EXE. <laughs> Come over to Sky Kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, they set up a EXE set up a deal. <laughs> I mean, is 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 was that that's the other one that Seven P created, right? Yeah, they created it. Uh, I think a couple of years right after. Mel's got some videos on it. I never, I it never pretty really much, jumped into it. Pretty much, it's a kiddie version, and right now. They're about T ten troops, but nothing higher than that. And there's only two servers, so it's sort of quiet, so I'm ripping through folks. So how about these new star jewels? So we got Phoenix, Sculptor, Takana. So with Phoenix, you get 40% dodge with three, five set, receive skill of Phoenix Radiance from the suit, 100% chance to trigger. This is when the battle begins, all of your troops enter the Nirvana state, which is nothingness, in which if they receive an, an attack that would otherwise kill them, their damage is taken is reduced to zero. So for Reggie, if he had an elf and he decided to put Phoenix Radiance on here. Uh, it's not going to help. She's still <laughs> ass. She'll just get shot the second time. <laughs> All depends on the Oh no, I didn't get shot the first shot. Guess what? Boom, second shot. Gone. But the damage... Uh, so That's going to be more useful for, honestly, infantry than it is going to be Walker. By a long shot. Um, like, it really is. And that's just because infantry typically get one shot when they're facing any air. Uh, unless they're running sweet, right? So I see this more valuable towards Ira, Especially if she's running T10 and for whatever reason she doesn't have Sun Raven or First Strike. She's going to survive whatever the sh she fucking gets hit by, no matter what. So... Using what? The Phoenix gems. Oh yeah. So like you could honestly ditch the Sun Raven and run Phoenix yeah, gems. Yeah, just run that you and know? you'll be fine. Yeah, literally. I mean, depending on if they have Phoenix gems as well, but. I mean, um, feasibly, whatever you're, if you're running a T10 Ira, it's not going to one shot, so you should be fine. <laughs> it depends what you're fighting, but yeah, I understand. True. True. I mean, if you're facing other infantry, you might one-shot them. Um, or if you have a shit ton of T10 in that slot, you might. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I see that you being more useful. How with, like, air shit? No. Oh, it's gonna fuck air. <laughs> it's gonna fuck air. It, 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 that, that's what I've been talking about multiple but... times. Like, this fun, if you, unless you do the right formation and you decrease the amount of troops you send, which just means you're going to be susceptible to other air who just full fucking sends. It'll, Although it'll if you... make it tough. It'll make it tough for AD blacks. Because they're yeah. not going to get one-shotted, typically. No. So it'll make it tough for them, but honestly, it might, it, it might mix things up a bit. Honestly, well, well, it's going to make a DS more viable than black, that, in my opinion. That's what I was about to say. With like, the hypothetically, new, if you were to put dude, this with, on Dragon Slayer... With the new pants, too, you can... Oh, dude, with the new pants for air, you can make... Or, sorry, the new infantry pants on uh, DS, you can get it to, like, what? 1,600 or 1,650% attack with certain setups. Yeah, if not higher. Like, it's insane. Um, but that's what I'm saying. With the if, assuming again, this is assuming 7P actually releases the gems. I mean, there's been items that they have put in the game and have never released. Uh, like Fire Awaken was a great example of that up until very recently. Um, I mean, you know, it could be one oh, of those no, things. Okay. Uh, by the well, that's why I was saying like 100% trigger chance is bullshit. 
Like, I could understand if, even if it was, like, 40%. I'd be okay with 40%, but 100% guarantee is a bit much, in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, by the time that I see them potentially releasing it, they're probably going to nerf it just like they did Fire Awaken, because they know it's too fucking OP. Um, I mean, I haven't seen them mention that they're going to release it, uh, at least for the public. Like, it's in the game. Like, if you go look, it's in the game right now. But they haven't actually done a release event for it yet. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like a Fire Awakened situation where we ask for it for like three years and then they finally give it to us. Are you talking about the new gems being that way? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, didn't I say that when they first came out? I was like, watch it. It's going to be like five years before we actually see them release. If you did, I don't remember you saying it, but you could have. Uh, I I I will be honest. I think I did. But... I'm going to just go with I did. (laughs) I mean, I... Since I had the idea to start running dual hybrid art, it's not as big of a concern for me. I mean, it kills my black, but at the same point, that's why I have my... God bless, excuse me, sorry. That's why I started building for an Ira. Um, (coughs) So, I mean, it sucks for anyone that has dumped everything in the air and nothing else uh, which i mean i'm gonna be honest that's kind of on you <laughs> you know like i feel like if you're not having at least you know t11 infantry unlocked uh, by the time that you have like all full fucking air t12 unlocked like that i feel like that's 100 percent on you to be honest for not having the you know adaptability that you would need um I mean, because this is, again, this is about I, where I, you should be at right here. If you got at least one tier 12, you should at least have all T11. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, no, I don't know. No, about I, I, I wouldn't say walkers. I would not go T11 walkers, but that's just me. Um, but you should at the very least, especially if you're around the four to five hundred mil mark and you have, you know, you're like hyperspace seven or eight or whatever you are at that point, and at that point, if you're reaching near that hyperspace 10, you should have at least T11 infantry unlocked. That makes your arc so much more viable to have that unlocked compared to just continuously pushing here. Like, I get it. You break off for a very small amount of time to go do infantry, but getting those T11 infantry give you so many options. It gives you Mysterious Warrior. If you want to run a King, you can run a King. If you want to run Ira, you can run Ira. It gives you sweet options against air. Like, it, you know, it just gives you a lot more adaptability, especially with the infantry plugins, uh, you know, plugin talents, which are fucking fantastic. It gives you so much more, you know, um, re- you know, reliability in your arc and the ability to adapt with the changing meta. True. I mean, the, 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 having the eye of greed does make a difference in a lot of standpoints does give you open availability between not only infantry comms, but a select few of (coughs) commanders. But at the same time, I still think it's still a good idea to at least progress through the walker research as well. Mm. Because, I mean, the, the reason why I say that is, you know, if you are specific, like myself, I built a sister wolf strictly to combat Reinhardt's, right? For the most part. We're talking like Kassadin's side, where no one's really throwing a full March Reinhardt in in terms of like tier 12. They're throwing a tier 2, maybe tier 3 Reinhardt out there, right? So, it's it's more or less having those pocket comms ready to go to combat certain situations. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I main Dragon Slayer, but at the same time, like if I see that, oh, I can I can take out that Reinhardt easily enough with little to I mean yeah with little risk, then yeah I'm gonna throw my sister wolf out there. But because I have the tier to support it, you know it makes it that much better than just relying on whatever is there in terms of the research. The other side of it too mm-hmm. is. I, I'll, I'll put it out there, too. I have a 30k Orochi, okay? And he... <laughs> okay. He, well, here's the thing, though. Like, in those small type of battles, he'll go toe-to-toe for about four or five rounds at times. 
until you hit a full march of like higher tier but for the most part he'll go toe to toe for a good amount of time pocket orochi okay and then soul reaver this is a hundred percent pure luck all right and this is the reason why i have him on my roster is his you know special skill yeah his ability with, yeah with, with his weapon yeah yeah to where that whole slot I've, i'll give you that i've played replays where i've sat there and won a battle simply sending tier two with enough to kill the the arc health points and i just got lucky 100 percent got lucky that like that triggered first yeah but that's all you, you know need. that yeah that is that's true um Fuck, I was about to say something that sounded smart in my head, but I don't remember it to be honest. Oh, sorry. I was going I was going back to the um the point of like the T elevens, you know? Like I think we can all agree outside out of the T elevens, T eleven inventory is the best. Like anyone feel free to correct me if they feel otherwise, but I think we can all agree that out of the three T elevens, that's the best one you could get given you know current talents and you know plugins and shit i'm going to um, take that silence as a resounding agreement yeah yes, i mean it, it i mean 11. in terms okay versatility yes because you have multiple options with i have greed i mean g- compared to t11 walkers which is literally I think it's only like a uh, hundred tech more than the T10 walkers. It's just dog shit. Like, it really is. I, I mean, it. The only time I've ever seen it effective is whenever you're running a Sister Wolf of corrosive armor <laughs> against a fucking Oroji. You know, um, and even then, it's not. It, yeah, or you know, sweet if you're swinging walkers, which is you know, it is what it is. Um, but even then, you don't need that many of them. You just put three in the slot, and boom, there you go. Um, I mean, feasibly speaking, you could just fucking get box T11 Walker. I I personally wouldn't waste the time researching it. Um. Well, I obviously researched it because I had to in order to get the tier 12. But, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, put any stock into building them either. Unless... Well, I mean, you can get them so easily from the box troop event, and even then, you don't. It's like I said, you really don't need a lot. Like if you're doing it, to, typically you're doing it in a sweet set, and you're not putting a lot in each slot. And typically, you're trying to space it out that way. You know, you have like the walkers in slot one, T11 infantry in another, you know, T11 walker, so on and so forth. That way, you sweep potentially infantry and walker. Uh, sorry, and air. So it's like a wombo combo. Um, if they have no RWE on, that is. But you're you're typically not running more than at most like ten a slot. And if you are, like I, you know, I remember um, two casts ago. So th- this was over six months ago, mind you. That whenever. Um, they were doing testing with the Walker talents. It acted. Uh, they slapped it on T11 Walkers with the <laughs> the healing field, where and it acted like a life steal weapon. That was the only time I've ever seen them be super effective. Well, and I, you know, I've also seen them, and this is more of a sweet thing, where uh, on Ira, and this was our last Cassatin with first. In ROI, where like Krell and uh, Nitrium. Yeah, members, because they, 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 were, copied, they, using... they copied Tivor. This was two casts ago, yes. They they copied what Tivor was doing because Tivor slapped it on his DS yeah. and they saw that he was getting lifesteal back against Sunraven Rebound and so they decided to do it in order to get the lifesteal as well. Well, I wasn't for that. It was just a matter of necessarily, it was a matter just to defeat the. <laughs> It was it was more of a sweet thing than anything, not necessarily the healing factor. I mean, 
Like you're, I'm you're, not you're sure. You're claim off of the healing factor to where I, I want to say now it was more of a Sui March to defeat the <clears throat> whichever commander he was using at the moment that it would Sui. I mean, I was about to say, we the only real quote-unquote walker main we have at that point, and I don't think he was even there, was low. So, again, the, the few times I saw ROI use it was either on a DS or a black to get the same effect. I didn't no. see a whole lot of sweet T11 no, in terms of T11 were, walkers. They were using it on Ira. I mean, it, for for what? It doesn't sweet air. And that's mainly what we got. I don't remember what it was for, but they were using it. We're talking months ago. Like, what, September? I think it was the last one. November. October. Yeah. Like, six or seven months ago. Yeah. Because 7P fucked. By the way, 7P fucked up their timetable <laughs> badly. Like, if you haven't noticed, we're going straight from GC finals to a week later, immediately another GC season starts. Cass is also late. We should have gotten the announcement on Thursday. It should have started this uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. There's no announcement yet, and we don't know when it's happening, so it's late. Like it, They have fucked their timetable completely with all this fucking event merging and bullshit. Like, even last cast, if you remember, we didn't even get a month-long period in between... The last cast and the next upcoming cast. So, like, it literally, like, they've just fucked their timetables all to hell. Um, sorry to get sidetracked, but I, I, I wanted no. to talk about that as well. Because no, that, a... that's been irritating me. <laughs> no, that's a good point. I mean, like, I just, it was September was the last cast of 10, which ended basically October. It's a 30 day ordeal. But uh, we had a series. It's usually every two months, right? Yeah, and we had one literally like middle of December, right after that. We had one. Did we have one in December? I don't. Yeah, we remember. did. Yeah, you guys we fought did. DZG. Yeah, remember? Oh, because you were so yes, upset about DZG. DZG. Yeah. yeah, we got DZG. So here are January, February, March. We should add one this month. Yeah, we should have, and. From the looks of it, we're not. And GC season, normally you get two to three weeks of downtime before you start the next season. It started less than a week later. No, like, you're, you're thinking... So, if you think about it, technically, yes. Everybody but those in finals have basically gotten like a three, four week break. No, even then, like after the GC finals, they typically have a two week down period before they start signing up again. No, no, the last, the last. No, it's normally about a normally about a week. week. Sorry, an hour, a week. Yeah, it's normally a week. Well, that's weird because EXE was bitching about it too. No, like literally been... in the in the gear talk earlier, they're like, "Dude, we got literally thrown straight into another GC match. Like it is way too soon." No, it's it's usually a week. Usually the week after. Usually we, I've, yeah, I've been playing since season one. <laughs> it's normally a week. Hmm. Well, yeah, you anyways. Got about four weeks of the uh, postseason stuff, and then a week after the final. Yeah. So yeah. I usually get five weeks of open time. Yeah. But anyways, back to the main point of the cast timer being fucked. Like, Again, going back to last time, normally you get, well, you know, because, I mean, you technically have, you know, cast ends, then you focus on your GC season, then you typically get, you know, roughly a month of downtime. But last cast, we got less than a month. Some, I, like, I tried to do a server invasion, and I couldn't do it after last cast. And now we come to GC finals, cast is literally two weeks away. Or was, quote unquote, supposed to be two weeks away. Um, and it's still not here, and so couldn't really jump again because we had to scramble to get back home because of the fact we we're like, oh shit, GC is in like a week or two. We can't go do a server invasion or have fun because of it. <laughs> I can't have yeah, fun because then... because Cass is around the corner and I need to be home for it. <laughs> and there, well, I mean, one of the funnest things in this game is doing a server invasion. Like it really is. Like, I'm don't get me wrong. 
I, I love GC. Well, fuck you, Soul. Uh, like, I love GC, and I love Cass, but it's nice to be able to just go fuck around on the server and just ruin somebody's day. It really is. And going back to Cass, I've been talking to CNJ, and they're absolutely clueless, too. So, yeah, it, it was supposed to start this weekend, and there's been no notice or anything about it. Yeah, because I've been talking to Fang and in, in, in the in the folks over there, and they're like, "Yeah, let's let's get something squared away." And you know, you were actually on my list of potential server invasions. <laughs> what? Fourteen seventy nine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> we were gonna do it. We we were gonna do it, but then we decided on RST. We were like, I feel like the Russians might fight more. And honestly, it's been a blast. <laughs> uh our our server is actually relatively quiet. <laughs> quiet. Uh, See, he's just saying that so way you don't come. He's lying soul. Don't listen no, to no, him. No, 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 <laughs> no. Well, those are the it, best it, planets actually, to invade, right? The quiet ones, because then no one's expecting it, and the next thing you know, you're like, bam, I'm here. Let's go fuck shit up. Yeah, yeah but I, I can't I, get you to come to 1482. I tried to get all of you to come here. Oh, the funny uh, thing is, though, 1438 was on my into, list. CNJ is so tied into the DZG and MVP and those guys. I'm pretty sure if someone invaded, it would it would turn into a, a flaming shit show real quick. Let's do it. Let's do All right. it. That's definitely next. Uh, yeah, I, I'm down for that server invasion. That's definitely next. I know Pew's down. Pew Pew was Pew was pushing for it. I was like, eh. which which server? 1482. 1479 is, is where we're at. Yeah, 79. And, and, and the funny part is, is I've been recruiting guys that I've known for years over into SXD, and every last one of them is, has fought some of you guys in server wars. So, <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, uh, I think that, uh, that so sounds we'll like a good vacation. <laughs> Dude, we'll just sit back and pop popcorn. No, uh, that's fine. You could just watch the arcs on fire. Uh, it, I see a 1483. 1482. 1479. I don't see a 1482. 1482 is that CMG oh, and uh, BMW. BMW is totally damn near disappeared. All they got is six players at 91,000. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty pretty I mean, much. They, they pretty in much the moved us up in the third place in uh, the so server. We, the the three biggest guilds on fourteen seventy nine are of course CNJ, uh, and then SXD were the second biggest, and the third biggest is uh, oh look there's is a, is red, but the fourth one is G fourth is GRM, and they've been growing real quiet like so. I got something that'll grow real loudly for them if they want. Fuck around, find out. So is DXS a sub guild of SXD, or are they just like mocking? Yeah, them? yeah, it's it's no no it's 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 a sub guild. You know, Missy server been looking kind of tasty right now. Missy <laughs> server just got invaded. I I saw that's the only reason I didn't mention it when y'all were talking about invasion servers because like I was like you know. They gave you all a lot of points when you were there. <laughs> and then, like, literally, as I was thinking about it, I saw, like, Misty yeah, was posted. They, they, gave us, they gave us a lot of points for a very, very small period of time. And then they stopped fighting entirely. I don't know, man. I'd be... I don't know, man. I just want to take that... I want to take that planet. Not gonna well, lie. I just want to take it. I don't know. I'd put it this way. Capitals, that'd be the only thing that I'd worry about. I don't farm. That's what we're taking. So, <laughs> that's that's where the uh, battle would be, I guess you could say. The only thing I want is sent. Fuck the rest of the couples. They can keep them. I'm going to take that damn planet. Roll Tide. You're just trying to save yourself money fighting in the other. <laughs> Roll Tide. Yeah, you can have ours. Be my guess. I don't think I want yours. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like I said we we if someone invades, we really don't care. Yeah, 
<laughs> We're like, yeah, whatever. <coughs> Excellent. Free planet? Thank you. But you just got to deal with, with CNJ. Yeah, <laughs> that, That's fun. not a problem. That is not a problem for me at all. Yeah. I will happily yeah, yeah. buy CNJ. Yeah. And, and it was funny is some of those guys, some of the, the Chinese guys over there are actually old friends of mine. And so then talking to him, I was like, yeah, why don't you join, join us? I was like, no, no, we're semi-retired and perfectly happy being cranky being and flipping tired. tiles whenever we want to flip tiles. <laughs> I love that huh? he has that fucking background. Like, that's how he's known is the tile, tile fucker. Who's that? <laughs> Frankie. Well, we have we have a bunch of guys that, that as soon as people start flipping tiles, they start flipping back. So it, uh, we're, Jokes we're, on them. I don't farm. <laughs> I'll fuck all your uh, titles. <laughs> yeah, but what, but what I'm saying is, is that we're all pretty much semi-retired. We far, if we don't really need to farm, most of us that know what we're doing, we don't need to farm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not if some p if you for whatever reason watch this, I don't use a dealer. Um, but there's <clears throat> no need to farm. I mean, reasonably <laughs> speaking, doesn't use a dealer. <clears throat> I don't. I don't use a dealer. No. Um, there, but... There's different ways to farm, though. You can. You can. You can. And that that was one of the things I was like, trying to explain to uh, the guys that are relatively. We have a lot of guys that are just now getting into the game. They've been around forever, and they're just starting to learn. I mean, really learn. They're like, yeah, people flip my tiles. I'm like, dude, I don't even need to farm. You need to hoard your shit. <laughs> You need to play smart, and you can get all your resource boxes from everything else. And yeah, like, I, I honestly wait for the superstore or whatever it's called. You know where they give yeah. them ten mil boxes. Mm. Yeah, I so said you don't even have to spend a ton of money. You don't even have to spend any money. You know, between the different oracles and how everything runs, you know. Just get smart, get good, and and if you're farming, you're farming just to farm. Oh, Rumi. Hmm. New episode of uh, Solo Leveling came out the other day. Oh, did it? Excellent. Yes, I will watch it tonight. Is that any good? It oh, yeah. is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I, I have loved it, dude. Soul never told me about it, and I found out about it through Instagram, and I got mad at him. He's like, "Did you? you you're just uncultured." I'm like, "You're right," but that's why I ask you. <laughs> so is that? And honestly, I watching it. It's fantastic, bad. dude. It's badass. It's bad, uh, dude. Uh, fucking both are. Solid. And it gets it gets crazier and crazier as it goes on. It's pretty badass. I, I fuck with it, and they they killed it on the animation. Dude, it, it I was honestly surprised how good the animation was for it. Cause it, didn't they have a relatively low budget too? Um, I don't remember. I, I didn't never never really looked at that. Cause Welcome I I thought I read somewhere that they're they're weeb out on anime. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's it's better than nothing. Would you would you rather me be silent? Because I can be silent. No. We can just sit here. No, I want you to talk, Rumi. I want you to talk the entirety of the Maybe not the entirety, but a lot of it. Okay, then you know what? The oh, best way to on, do man. that is to I'll shut up and talk about anime. <laughs> well, what about the other star jewels? Like Sculptor? I mean, Sculptor, I don't really... I mean, it, it'll have its uses, I think, but... But it's a way to add penetration again. <laughs> yeah, and, well, here's another thing. Can't you add, like, the pen... You can add more uh, RWE on weapons now. You can add pen on like chest and shit, and TS on test on chests. Like you can do a lot of different things with these new gems. I love that they're not class specific, too. Yeah, like, yeah that is very. Well, with, yeah. with Skeptor, it's that's the best part of it. Resistance weakened. That, that's what they should have done with links, oh, canes, One, two, and. Three, four. Okay, so yeah, it would be a chest piece. For the resistant RWE. Yeah, but there's also I'm pretty sure there's one that you can add like an RWE piece onto like a weapon. No. So with this one for Phoenix, it's 
number three, which I think would be a weapon. No. Weapon is one in five. Is it one in five? Okay. Going back. Because <clears throat> it goes one for weapon, two for chest, three for pants, right? Yeah. Yeah, Sculptor's got RWE, but it's on number two. Yeah, so Phoenix, uh, no. Phoenix, it's on five. That's the weapon. Yeah. And then. That's the weapon. For Sculptor, it is chest piece. And for. It's also a chess piece for its mana. But for sculptors here, also just have a 20% chance to trigger this before action until the next action. First row, enter a spotless armor state, reducing damage taken by 20%. So when it says spotless armor will remove all buffs from the attacker, so hypothetically, say you're facing a Roger. Do you think it would take away his defensive stance? Probably. Yeah. I mean, that would eliminate the need for um, Steam it would also It would also take away Black's best offense, so he wouldn't hit as hard. Okay, so we got... So, so te theoretically... It could help in terms of Ryan killers. I wouldn't say Orochi because that one is like a standalone. I don't think I've ever seen anything clear Orochi's heal. Correct me if I'm no. wrong. No. No, not uh, the only thing that uh, stops it is also another Orochi's corrosive armor. It doesn't get rid of it. It just acid bomb too. There's yeah. plenty of things that'll shut it down. Yeah, it doesn't get rid of it. It just makes it to where he can't heal. Right. So, I mean, there there should be some uses for Sculptor. I guess if you're building something to combat Reinhardt or... Um... No, no. This would, be, this would be to, like... Well, I guess Reinhardt, but... I feel like it has use on anything, honestly. Anything you want to avoid... Um, well, for a low level like me, uh, I would drop my Scorpio for the Sculptor, because I've looked at the other two. The Sculptor would be the better choice <coughs> to replace a Scorpio and still yeah. keep your Virgo, and you get more out of it. And the only downside is you would lose that one open space on your weapon with gems where you normally have a a four and a couple of fives sets. Well, Which would be because what I'm looking at, if I wanted to do my blader, I would do a, the fact that you're still using blader, bro. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to use something that not everybody's got. If everybody uses it, everybody knows what it can do. If you use one that nobody thinks about, you get surprised. You get slapped when you don't expect it. I mean, how. Bring okay, back Mary. Bring back Mary. Oh, God, shut up. Please. <laughs> we couldn't get a Mary during the EXE fights. Bring, bring back Soda Man. Man. Bring back Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, Rocket was a nice meta. I enjoyed that. Bring back oh, Rocket before I, I, she got nerfed. <laughs> oh yeah, when 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 her uh, when her armor was actually a forty percent trigger rate. Yeah, uh, and it did like uh, it did some damage. Oh it, uh, yeah, to 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 listen to all of the the golem mains back. Just scream. I miss those days. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just saying, bring back Mary. Bring back Mary meta. Let's do it. So, 
Tucana gives you 40% SWE. Where <laughs> the other gem sets, it's only 30%. Right? So you 30, maybe 10? Virgo. Yeah, Virgo is the only one. So, but yeah, ten, it's 30. That's, that's a plus, at least a plus 10 there. So there, there's, yeah, there's like a, a plus good... 10. There's a good setup there, and in, in, if you're only running a three set, in terms of trying to build an S, a SWE gear, but then when it comes to the five set suit, it's a hundred percent chance to trigger with, when the battle begins. Inflict a debuff on the enemy troop with the highest population, causing them to be unable to trigger plugins and star jewel effects until the end of the battle. No immunity for this. So, yeah, but. We talked about how easy that is to counter with just a slot of rangers. But how often are people going to think about sending like a full march slot of rangers? Where after you find out every about fucking it. time, if that shit becomes relevant, yeah. After I know, you but then all they have to do is pull and run into a DS, and now those rangers are just cannon fodder for the rest of the troops. Yeah, well, don't put it in the wrong slot like a dummy. Hmm. I, I feel like there had to be some testing with that. Because, you know, it, it doesn't always read how it actually plays out. So I feel like there need to be some testing with that. Otherwise, otherwise, if the if you're if you're going like, you know, one slot versus one slot, that could be a deal breaker. Not with Phoenix. By the way, all the new gems have uh, upside that is a bit, you know, like, damn, this could be hella useful. Yeah, I mean, they're... They're doing a de decent job of balancing the game compared to what it was before, in my opinion. Now it's not just one predominant person or thing that you're fighting every three seconds. Zest is an exception because of the fifth skill. But... What are you doing, Sexel? He's jacking off! Don't worry about it. See, I knew he was jacking off. I'm actually making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Same thing. Disgusting. I thought I heard that. Alright, well. So, what, I guess a good question too to kind of come off of here is like, now that um, the Chinese guilds kind of got fucked for once in finals with EXE making it to the number one slot. How do you think they're going to rearrange? Because DCG was supposed to be the winner this time around. From what I heard. No. No. Not even close. Really? I thought DCG was supposed to be the moneymaker this, this, this one around. No, it was always between, in my opinion, always between EAC and TMB. I know there was, hey, we want DZG to win because people have personal vendettas. But realistically speaking, it was always going to be EAC versus TMB. So do you think the Chinese are going to just keep move on to the next superpower that they think will win? Or do you think they're going to try TMB again? Um, I've heard that most of the Westerners that were in TMB have left or are currently in the process of leaving. Really? So, well, nothing's coming here, and usually, our our server is the one that sends to the others, and ours, all the Chinese groups are way down in power. The highest yeah. one is like 13 billion, which is down from 55. So somewhere there's there's a group floating around somewhere. Well, I mean they're like they're quitting because they lost faith in TMB. That is what I have heard, 
like now. quitting quitting or like leaving like leaving chinese guilds and going to western guilds gotcha which i have had a couple of uh, surprises at my door and i said no thank you i mean it makes sense like tmb was like talking their fucking balls off and they got shit on you mean raz like, well, I mean, Raz is their spokesperson for the Western guilds, unfortunately, oh, so yes. That, that was a terrible decision, if it was ever made. I don't think it was made. I think he just assumed the mantle of it, to be honest. He was just like, well, I'm the only one that actually talks, so here you go. I... But I, I've heard a lot of them are, like, leaving for Western guilds. Like, we've had a few try to come to first. Um, and due to things I won't really talk about, some of them were turned down. Um, I know that a few tried to go to EXE, and EXE was just like, yeah, <laughs> guess what? You can go fuck yourself. We're, we're, not, we're not part of your bandwagon party where you just jump from top guild to top guild. Mm. Uh, which, I respect that. Um, Isn't that what everybody does with EXE, though? I mean, they jump over there, I, but like... I'll have to say that I would be very shocked if EXE accepts anybody right now because they made 15 slots just for ROI top people, just to, for the finals. <laughs> and we're not talking about like the, the final match, we're talking about like just the entire Galactic Finals. So from game one. Yeah. So oh, yeah. They, and they don't have mm, any, as far as I'm aware, they don't have any aspirations to let anybody else in, other than maybe a few more people from ROI. Yeah, like, their their doors are closed right now. So, I mean, realistically speaking, I don't know where the fuck they're going to go, because there's not really a whole lot of super West guilds anymore. <laughs> um, so it's mainly you're either in... I mean, shit, I don't even consider a first or super guild, but considering, you know, where the rest of the guilds are at right now, like, in terms of western guilds, you know, there's not many options. You you got EXE first. Um, it, this is, keep in mind, this is for potential, like, GC or CAS, not right. just, you know. Well, you have WWS, which is also a Western Guild. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't consider them a CAS dominator ever. No, I, just, I don't either. I don't think they try. Frankly, I, mean, I they think they'll probably look for a Western group they can uh, take over. Uh, I really don't think that they could do it, even if they tried. To be honest with you, no. Savage, um, what about Savage Ass Outlaws? That's a new one for me. No, Saul. No, that's just no, cool. no. They could not dominate a cast unless they well, had. I'm talking. I'm talking. Had... I'm talking Western guilds right now. Well, I'm, we're talking about what my point was: either cast dominators or GC dominators. <laughs> There's really only two options in terms of cast domination or GC domination in the Western guilds right now. Missy's guild is in, like, the same state that they, like, we're big, we can trade off really well, but we want to dominate a cast. Yeah, so, like... Not unless we got matched up with literally every medium-sized guild and no super guilds well, that, then maybe that, we have a chop but. that's that's a strange argument to make though because if roi was never wasn't always matched up with three of the top guilds we would have dominated and i know that because of we have dominated in the past when it came to some a, a guild that was of like size or slightly lower i mean y'all were bigger than first not gonna y'all, lie. Y'all were bigger than most guilds after Roy and Dom joined. Yeah, so you can't really say, well, we faced other super guilds. If we were the same size, we would have won because you were bigger. No, no, I'm saying if we didn't than... have super guilds. To where I mean, y'all like... were like 20 bill bigger. That's a pretty decent gap right there. I guess it also comes down to the semantics of who has what versus how many are. Yeah. See, there you go. That's a better. 
better argument. It, it than... does come down to the semantics of who has what and how um, and how active everybody is. Because I do, I, I would yeah. say in the one that we won against Zoom, Zoomy, I think it was Zoo. I would not consider that a win, my friend. I, literally, we we dominated their planet with what it was, this was nine like people. This, this was like the six, or third or seven season. people. This was yeah, like a year ago, whenever Cassidy first came out. Year two. I know. Ago. I'm just saying, I wouldn't consider that a win because Zoo has never been a winning guild, <laughs> like well, ever. But they, he he put up a fight back in the day. I mean, Zumi just throws his wallet into his phone and says, here you go, just go fight for me in auto garrison. Well, no, I will say back in, back when, like, the second or, it was, like, the second or third cast it's in, they put up a fight. This was also Let me when just it say... was less, this was less, more complicated gem sets, less complicated troop sets. Like, this was before everything started to get more and more complicated. In my opinion. Can I just say something that's probably going to upset you a little bit? Whatever. So I was on 1550 two years ago. Two years ago. With Zoo. And Zoomy was the planet leader. I was 55 mil. And I was fighting their 600 mil dudes and winning. At 50 mil. So (laughs) this is two years ago. The time frame before you mentioned of a year ago. And I was beating their tops with just little fifty-five mil old me. So I would, I would strongly recommend refraining from bragging about beating Zoo. It wasn't bragging. I was saying that if we were again, that's not what I, I wasn't bragging. You're twisting that into something that I wasn't. But no, I mean you were talking about beating likewise guilds in terms of power and strength, and then you mentioned Zoo, which. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's a reason Zumi was voted second worst on right, that so list. This would, have been, <laughs> this would have been three years ago, because I posted a video about Cassitin, and that was an update back in May of 2021. So this would have been about three years ago. Yeah, I'm not popping off later, y'all. Oh, fuck you too. Wait, buddy. I got an anime to watch. <laughs> Yeah, because I was in the very first Cassitan, and that was only four uh, servers. The next time they come up with Cassitan, they went up to eight. Straight off the bat. Which was a pain in the ass. All I'm saying, Rumi, is that every Cassitan so far for the last five or six has been against either the biggest guild or three of the biggest guilds or all of the biggest guilds. And yeah. we already knew it was going to be one or the one or the other in terms of the the top ones. Which kind of I mean over things. And then they implemented the that uh, ranking rule to get rewards. That was bullshit. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm not gonna I lie. Mean, like, I agree. And I, I, the reason, the main reason why I think it's bullshit because there's a lot of battle going on that you can't get the point structure unless you kill yourself, killing monsters or killing monsters, which is killing yourself to get the point structure by killing monsters. Because the only other way you're gonna get those points is in the gates. And if you're in a position to where you're just not matching and you're not able to combat it, and that time I wasn't. Well, now, yeah, it's not fair. Your ability to do it, but now that I fi- quote unquote finally have formal, huh? Um, but congratulations again, by I the did. way. I did the smart thing. I went with the one that was more uh, relevant to what I needed to do. Right yes, now. yes, good job, buddy. Now you don't have to bitch about broken fortress that much anymore. Congratulations. Yeah. But the point being here is like that that seven pirates, if you watch this, which I know you will because you do and you've admitted that you do. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
you you got to take away that fucking ranking system because especially when you have two two guilds aligning so now you basically just cut 100 people from one guild and 100 people from one guild maybe if and if that like it's it's 50 50 like only potentially 50 people from one guild and 50 people from another guild are going to get points enough to score now when you merge and you have that alliance say that one pulled the weight a little more than the other but the other one was there enough for support that it made sense for them for everybody to win now it's like we'll say out of 200 we'll say 150 are from one guild and 50 are from another guild and the rest of the people from that other guild that are are getting fucked even though they, they potentially put in the same amount of time and money and you know their life into that cast of 10 it's very discouraging in my opinion well yeah i i will agree with that especially for free to play like it fucks them over so bad because they they can't compete with you know pay to win in terms of points and yeah, that's because proven... the maximum you can only get about a hundred thousand points that's just by doing the monsters and doing the uh the uh buffs oh and you right gotta do the buffs fast because if you don't the whales and the higher higher guys are going to take the uh advanced buffs and once they get them advanced buffs you can't get past seventy thousand. yeah unless well, you I mean... get into the actual gate battles well i mean reasonably speaking cast is full of rhines too and it's really hard. First off, it's hard for Rhines to, uh, like, yes, they'll typically get some from every battle unless they're facing a two-slot bus and they're full marching. And so they're just losing troops end on end, right? Um, but, like, I feel like they need, if they're going to do that, they need to incorporate wins as well, not just based off points, but wins as well. This is something we actually talked about in first as well when we were delegating um, points and shit, was taking into account like um you know hey who had the most wins who this day or who had the most wins this day that's something some p doesn't take into account because as a reinhardt like you could have 200 wins but you're only getting 20,000 points out of that compared to your teammate who's only had 10 wins so it got like you know 300,000 like and you know especially as a you know as an ex reinhardt in cast it was hard for me to get like don't get me wrong i still got like i think the last cast I got like 1.7 being a Reinhardt main. But like in terms of especially free to play Reinhardts who like casts their time typically to shine because it's the cheapest time to run a Rhine and to be actually be effective and helpful to your guild. Like they're not getting points like that. They're typically at most getting like 200,000. And compared to the rest of the guild, if you're in a super guild, they're, you know, they're not free to play players are typically getting a mill plus. So you're going to get cut all of those rewards no matter how many battles you fight in. Well, not to mention too, if you're battling those Reinhardts that are running tier one, tier two, you're not getting You're getting no points. You're not getting <laughs> any points. Yeah, like you're rarely getting points. Yeah, I I, I agree. Like I would be a hundred percent okay with like maybe like a times whatever booster for how many wins you get. Yeah, like just something like that at least. Like, because again, Mo Reinhardt's typically get a lot of wins, but they don't get really any points, and I feel like that needs to be accounted for. Like, and that's some. I'm not even a Reinhardt main any you know anymore. I hate being Reinhardt main. Uh, for those of you who enjoy it, like, I hold no qualms about it. Uh, you know, I get it. It's cheap. It's easy. You know, you just send in. You don't really worry about winning or losing. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I just I feel like they need to count that as part of their points as well. Because if they counted that, then we would see a lot more of the people that are putting in a lot of work and speed ups in time as a free-to-play or a Reinhardt main, or, you know, even a T1, T2 Orochi, you know, like, they win a lot of battles, but they're not getting any points, because, you know, they're not killing shit. Exactly. So, 
I feel and, like that should be acclimated into it as well. And, you gonna and, finish your point there? Well, yeah, sorry, sorry. So, so my that's, bad, my that's, bad. That's what I'm saying. Is like I'm okay in terms of what you brought up in terms of like a win, like getting something towards your winning streak. Like I'd be okay with a. Well, I mean, even if they gave like. Like a multiplier. 10 points per win. If they gave 10 points per win, you know, a Reinhardt can sometimes get two or 300 wins a day. You know, that's that's fucking, you know, 20, 30,000 points just off of that. And if you do that every day in cast, you know, like, that adds up. And that'll get you the points to where you compete with other people who are just going for point hunting. I think they should just get rid of the ranks anyways. Like, I, yeah, I, I feel like if you're an alliance, everyone should get the regard, rewards regardless. 100%. And you know what? alliance, it, everyone should get it. But right now, oh, if yeah, you're I mean, not you know an alliance, it, it, then everybody gets it. Yeah, like, you know, and, like, I get it. Like, if your other guild is just in, that your alliance with is literally doing nothing, then you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be in an alliance with them. No, I mean, if, if, because, well, I mean, you've been in like two, two back to backs with us to where, you know, one of them, EXE, definitely was the dominant guild and we were supporting them. But yeah, y'all, a lot there, of y'all got fucked out of rewards when you were literally winning the fuck out of them. Oh, yeah. And well, me being one of them. But, um, that's, that's my point. Like, you you make these alliances strategically not only just to be a powerhouse but to what's how is it going to benefit you so in one case with exe it was a fact of the matter of it being well we were there to support them they were the powerhouse in terms of you know strength and then you know we would just kind of run amok in terms of like hitting tiles and being a nuisance in that sense but when it came down to another one, there was another cast in way back when where like ROI was the main powerhouse and then we had somebody there to just kind of provide support for us. And that's where, you know, like that difference of power doesn't always mean that one like one could have done it without the other. Right, exactly. I mean, I know that uh, even in first there's been casts where if it wasn't for weenies, we wouldn't have won. I mean, in the past two casts we've had luckily we have literally had no need for weenies but i mean don't get me wrong it would have been nice it would have saved my wallet a lot um but literally like it just that's what it is like the i know that there are some guilds without weenies they do not win casts and i'm not gonna name names but if you're watching this you probably know who you are yep but, you know, regardless, like, there are some guilds who need weenies. And you know what? The weenies deserve rewards, too. But the issue is, if they ally with that weenie guild, right, then they're literally just fully, you know, they're they're probably going to get half the map unless they're just, like, completely dominant, right? And so you're still splitting, you know, rewards again. Because you're not getting full rewards. Yeah, I need weenies. Oh, I know you need weenies, OnlyFans man. Um, <laughs> of all the people that say they need weenies, <laughs> this man. <laughs> the man that sells pictures of his butthole for money. Yes, sir. Oh, resistance. What are you going to do with you? Oh! And Please put me out of my misery. That does remind me. I know when I first got the foam wall resistance, you were like, I would have put 46 on one of the um, alcades because it quote unquote, you said quote unquote gives you more. Yeah. Uh, technically, no. They both give you, and I'm going to put that right here so we can all see it. No, no, it wasn't about the pen. It was about the attack it was uh, giving you because. See, I did it. Technically, the. Uh, I hastily did it for the and formal. Trying to make up for what was being lost from eating the tan lane. But in terms of FOMO versus Alcade, they're both base 4%. So they both grow the same in pain. Yeah, no, he, he was going to be stealth attack. 
just a little misunderstanding there. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Because, I mean, we're scoring what? You really don't grow the fucking true damage of it. So once you get it to fucking 45, if all your other weapons are 45, I'd try and push the weapons that actually give attack. Yeah, you know? I, I would push everything else 50 before I worry about the full mold 50, to be honest. You know, it was late well, at that, night. Uh... I was just trying to recycle everything into it, get it back up to forty-five. So. Running formal, you have to run a dawn hole, don't you? Just to be at a hundred percent. I am currently at. This is actually my calculation right here. Um, ninety-two. Oh. Actually, take the back. That was one hundred and two with um tanling. So right now I am at. Let's see if it's gonna let me do this. I don't know what you're looking at. Oh, yeah, you gotta look at my stream. Hold on. Your YouTube shirt? Yeah. Okay, your uh, Discord stream's not showing shit. Yeah. Hold on, I gotta change. Oh, come on. Change to this one. No, it'll let me change. Blurry as fuck. Is it that blurry? Yeah, I can't see any of that fucking short. Alright, hold on. I will change it to... Going back to Discord. If it lets me select a different screen. Um, I don't know if y'all have uh, talked to Robin or anything. Oh, shit. What is going on? Okay. Well, that, Welcome back. That happened. All right. So, you gotta, I want to show you my mysterious warrior build real quick here. And just let you know how much dodge I already have on it with just level 30 gear. So I'll just send. Uh, I'd prefer if you didn't show it on stream, but oh, this is just. If you don't want me to. Yeah. Um, Rumi, I want to see. Huh? No. So here, just for the sake of argument, there you go. Resistance. So I'm at 91.4. Okay. That is. Oops. So. Well, my. Put it this way. I didn't change the. Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. But if you look, so that's just level 30 gear, right? So I have a total of basically 600% from just the 30 gear. Then the I agree that a use gives me an extra 384. So 984 dodge right there, plus 600% awakening. I'm already at 1584 dodge on that build. Hold on, you're at 91.4 with the tan line? No, no, no. Change no, that's that, with the FOMO. With the FOMO, I just didn't change it on the graph. Okay, okay. That's why I was like, what the fuck? So, but yeah, you're running the Dawn Hole to get to... 91. Yeah. Okay. So, and... with what I'm looking at here, so you have... Five, so, I have 600, 600 just from gear, and then I have the 384 from the I agreed in my research right now, which I need to do more infantry dodge research, but that's 984. And then... With the uh, Dodge Awaken, which is another 600%, that'd be 1584% Dodge. Has Just been, off of level 30 gear. Has been <laughs> strangely successful for you? It, it actually has. I haven't done much testing um, with it. Uh, like I did a little bit of testing in GC uh, versus DZG, but 
it was full of iras so that actually hurt me a lot more than it helped me um, <laughs> and zeths which have a guaranteed hit skill so again didn't help that much um but in terms of like i've done testing in sims and shit against you know other comms um especially against like blacks and other walker comms um and unless they're like running full accuracy or in terms of air running full accuracy formation i typically tend to get a lot of kills and the only time they kill me is with the gemini trigger hmm. what force skill are you running uh with mysterious warrior wings to try to get as many dual mm-hmm. blades as i can because i have his weapon uh I can't see your gear. What's your uh, trigger rate? Uh, I need to swap out my pants for fire spirit pants because I literally have zero trigger. That's why I need wings. So, um, it's uh thirty percent with zero and trigger gear. T eleven infantry. Mm-hmm. And I even with T eleven infantry, I got almost sixteen hundred percent dodge with just thirty gear. Have you tried uh, the T10 build for her? For Mysterious Warrior? Yes. Uh, Three front slots of T10 Walker with Power Walker and and Interference build to try and knock out a fucking... I have. The issue is I don't have enough accuracy with my 30 gear. Gotcha, gotcha. If... And the Gemini triggers weren't happening enough for like i was trading but the issue is with the walkers i actually didn't have enough dodge um and so that that was between the walkers not having enough dodge and not having enough accuracy because of the 30 gear it it wasn't viable um i mean i imagine if i got that gear up to you know like the 40 45 range and did more walker research like you know more walker dodge and shit like that maybe but it, currently with the 30 gear i have it's not it's not viable uh rumi are you in game at the moment mm, right now i can be in the game why i was gonna share the sim of my uh what i've just been running on mysterious warrior for the moment oh yeah go ahead well, not to mention you need to get some shit up to 60 in terms of skill level. Well, again, you, well, the awakening doesn't matter as much to me, to be honest. Or actually, I can just send you a screenshot, make it easy. Because uh, at level 30, the awakening does more than the airship awakening by a lot. So but I, I'm just, you know, it's a work in progress. I literally don't have cash right now. <laughs> I get it, buddy. I guess that's a different topic. I mean, did you ever find another job? Or are you still kind of floating around? Right oh, now? yeah. I, I start tomorrow. Oh, well, congrats. It, yes, Mysterious Warrior does have that 40% chance. But if you have enough dodge, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. See, I was contemplating that question. Like, won't T11 always... I didn't see the Mysterious Warrior part, but like 40% chance of being hit. Where where does that metric comes from? Like being a forty percent chance of being hit. I don't. I don't. It's it's based off the tier difference, to be honest. And I don't think it's forty percent. I'm pretty sure, uh, if I remember correctly, it's like fifty actually. Um, but the the main issue is it's really hard to have that much dodge to dodge in the first place. Um, with T11, unless you're running pure dodge, which is exactly what my build is. I literally have all dodge gear on that shit. Uh, and I don't even have any gems on it yet, um, which also could be impacting my sims a little bit, to be honest. Um, you have no gems on that? Mm-mm. That that's literally with no gems. That's the base stats. If I if I put really? dodge gems on it, I, I I would be I believe close to seventeen hundred. Oh, Remy. So yeah, like it it would be a powerhouse. You need to put some gems in there, buddy. <laughs> well, the issue is I plan on swapping out the chest piece and the the pants at some point. 
Well, then just you don't yeah. put your highest. So you, you find the one that you want to put on it, but you don't put the highest one. I did that for a while, too. It's where like, okay, well, this is like the second or third best one. I'm okay losing this one. And when I get to the gear that I really want, then I'll put the highest one that I have. I just don't like wasting shit, to be honest. I really don't. Like I said, this is a build yes. in progress. Like, I'm literally just fucking around with it right now. That screenshot I just sent you, Rumi. I've been running that and having real good uh, success with it. Hmm. You probably have higher walker research than I do. Because I, I have literally, I unlock T11 walkers and that's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all I have. Well, plus with Sniper, you get a guaranteed hit. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's the difference there, is you get that guaranteed hit, yeah. But that, that I, I sent you the screenshot of my gear I'm running on it right now. Wow. Yeah, I swap in chest every once in a while for fucking serious warrior. Yeah. yeah. I just can't uh, I, I, lost a question that actually would make sense to me right now in terms of fourth talent. Yep. No. Okay. It's, it's going to take it off. Damn it. What's the question about fourth talent? Uh, It was one of those, like, you know how, like, if one talent is on a troop and you try to move it over to another troop, it takes it off the previous one? Uh-huh. So with the yeah. fourth plugin being kind of a multi-use one, not just infantry... It still takes it off. It, with still, that. it still takes it off, yes. Yeah. It, like, it won't let you have the same on multiple troops, so it automatically takes it off. Yeah. that's. I think that should be changed. I think you should be able to use that one multi-using. I mean, the issue is is that that shit would stack, like especially the Overseer at max level. You know, you get thirty percent plus thirty percent, but you know, it, it just. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about stacking. I'm talking about like being able to use it on using the Ether Plus one, using that on um, not just like having it assigned to D the Degen, but having it also assigned to the Blue Hunk. Oh yeah, like being able to multi I mean... multi assign that one, like that level, mm -hmm. the tier four of plugin skills, like the, are the. Uh, talents sorry like i i feel like those being so descriptive in a sense of being across different troop different infantry walker or airship types but for the same troop type in that section i feel like it should be multi-usable yeah i mean you know that that goes to a point that i've mentioned to 7p a few times myself where i'm like you know how we have gear presets that we can save why don't we have talent presets I feel like that would, especially if, especially if you're bigger and you run infantry and air and walker, what have you, or you're continuously swapping between different air troops because you have all the air troops unlocked, you know, for different situations. Like, by the time that you switch everything over to the troop you need and you send it in, there's got to be something else there that you're not going to counter. Um and that's something I've mentioned to them a few times now where I'm like, we might as well have a talent preset as well. Like, that would help out a lot of people. Yeah. Because, I mean, in the heat of battle, you don't have time to be... Select this one. Spending... Which one was it that I was supposed to select? Fuck, I didn't select the right one. Yeah, exactly. You don't have 20 or 30 seconds to swap over all the talents to a different troop. Like, you have, like, maybe 5 or 10, and then somebody else is going to get in front of you that's going to take it out or whatever. Like, it just... There needs to be a preset button for talents, I feel like. Yeah. That, But where would you put it? I mean, you would put it in the talents, you know? Like, it's like how when you click on, you know, on your comm and you can go to your gear presets from that, you would click on the troop and you could go to your talent presets, like, in the bottom right corner, like they do with gear. Okay. So you're saying you'd put the presets in the talent section? Yeah, in the actual talent section. Gotcha. What if they and made like, it would a, just... like another click for like subsection for talents, but it was in the gear selection one? Um, because I feel like then we would come. Because mm. I feel like it's it's already 
one, two, it's like two or three clicks to get to the talent one. So if you put it kind of tame. I mean, yeah, the issue is how would you select what troop type then? Or what troop you want to go on? Well, that's what I'm saying. It'd be like you'd have that, the, you'd have the gear category. And then there would be. Like Wait, we could put it in the category. formation, you know, where you save your troop formations. You could put it there. That, you know okay that would be interesting too yeah 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 because i mean you put the you automatically select your troop formation and then it pops up like your talent presets and you can just slap them on and go yep i feel like that'd be the best way to do it compared to putting it in with like the comm screen for gear because then you can specifically like you already have your formation pulled up it has your talents for your troops and you can just swap as you need well, that would also bring up the con the conversation of like when you go to set, uh, set your troops, how it gives you the option to set gear, having the actual like preset gear menu available in that sense too. Yeah, I mean, honestly, both of those would work. It would be much faster, much faster to do it that way. Either way, if you put both of them there, that's still faster than. You're having to go to your arc, then you click on the comm, then you have to click on the equipment button, then you click on the gear, and then you exit out of that, and then you go select your formation. If they put everything at the same time where you pick your comm, then you can select the gear you want on it, and then you do your troop formation, then your talents. That's going to be much faster than doing all those individually. Yeah. 7P, take notes. Take some notes. Get your notepad out. Do something with your we're giving We're giving you decent ideas here. I say decent because I can already feel that otters breathing down my back. Yeah, if it was done that way, it'd be like a three-step process, getting it down to maybe 15 seconds instead of like 20 or 25 seconds fiddling with a, a roll of the decks and stuff. Well, I mean, like taking a look at it, since it wasn't yeah. just sharing my screen. Let me try to share that again here. See if it dies. So, you know, you select your troop, you have a choice between formation, and then, oh, you, you can't, oh, oh, okay. So it does have the saved equipment there already. I thought this was to pick your, never mind. Huh. Where have I been? So there's your saved equipment. But if they added a third button for talent, two. It, it would make it so much more efficient. I know most of the bigs in my guild complain about it because they're constantly swapping troops, swapping commanders, so on and so forth. I just um, I don't see it happening in the saved formation. I well, no, was... I mean it, it's not in the actual saved formation. What oh, I, yeah, what I was right. talking. Yeah, I was talking about once you add, so that you click whatever formation you want. And then it puts it in there. And then in the bottom right corner, after you do that, before you click the send button, there's a fucking talent formation button that you can click and equip on your troops. I, I would You know think, what I mean? I would think making another button right here, right above either the formation or above the gear would make sense. And then... Then, yes, you could come over here to the talents and have that formation set up here in the transformation section. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever you, whatever you save here, like... Yeah. Just making it... And then that way, when they, when they go in your formation, you can select to have them automatically put on. Yeah, and then having it right here, this is, this is where it makes sense. Yeah. Have it right above the form. Yeah, put it right above the formation button, like on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Just take out the uh, till it says capacity. You don't need that damn little thing. Take it out of her. Put it right above the formation. That that get your, get your that's what I just did. And then hit that button, and bam, you're set. Yeah, put it put it right above the formation button. That'd be the perfect place to put it. And that way it's a one-stop shop. You're not having to waste, 
you know, a shit ton of time trying to figure your shit out because by the time you do, you're going to send and there's already somebody else you're going to have to face because somebody got in front of you or more people got in the line. So on and so forth. 100%. That was, so, but here's the other thing, though. How would you structure it? Because hypothetically, <laughs> like, you know, with this one, I have two different types. This one, I have four different types. So, right, go, go, just for shits and giggles, go ahead and load that two-type formation, right? Just, just click load, right? So, now, it would pop up a the for the talent button in the top left, right? That's, uh, once you put the troops in, that's when it should pop up. And then you can then select on your troop. So, like, you know, if I can, I, I'm struggling to explain this. So you would click the button, and then it would pop up the options for both. And what you would do is you would just select, because um, it would pop up for either gen and origin. And you would just select each one, and you could put in a preset talent that you wanted, and then just hit confirm, and it goes. Hmm. Trying to think of another way here, too. Like, say, say you do have, like, a setup like this, right? Yeah, if... where you. What? Well, I was just gonna say where you have four different troops, but yeah, go so on. Where you have four different troops. So, what if it was a contingent on the formation, so to speak? I'm trying to think of like how to make that easily clickable to where you're only selecting what you want. Like, say, say it was like this, but in a save point you know yeah that, that's kind of well, so yeah if you go to the like formation where you had it loaded like somewhere so here, whenever you pop like a formation save point for like this is what i want all these ones to have you know and to where like you go into your formations but you can save like the talents to that formation yeah so well i mean that that would be nice too um my thought process was so you know how it has the screen where it, once you select your formation it has all your troops when you select the talent modification right it'll do the same thing that it does with your formation it'll pop up all the troop types and what slot they are in so like in that formation you got two slots so you'd pop it up it would pop up your two slots and you can select each troop and then you have your list of um you know same thing as you would like you know um troop formations it would be talent formations that you can save and so then you would just select on each troop that you want you don't have to select all of them you could just select slot one or slot two set your pre-saved talents and it just equips it to it and gets it off of whatever it was on before yeah i really feel like it would have to coexist with the formations somehow well what you could do is ignore Ignore what troop you have and what slot. Just have a deal that says these talents. You have three talents. You want it on slot one. You want them on slot two, slot three. Well, it don't matter what, what the saying. troop like, is the, in the gear. The you just hit have to be something like you this. Want. Yeah. Yeah, to just have a preset. It's got like slot one through six, and you'd have like the talent set up in such a way to where you know, okay, well, I'm going to use this two slot. So I can use, well, hypothetically say that there's a formation right above this one here for whatever. And instead of troops, it'd be like the three or four talents here, three or four talents here, knowing, okay, this is what I want. Load, boom, we're good. So I, yeah. I I feel like it would have to coexist in the same format of the formations if we were gonna make that like a one stop shop. And you would have Well, to... I mean Yeah, that that's kind of what I was saying, where it would yeah. like do the yeah. same thing where you know you could select your troop types for the formation and then just slot them in, but you could like apply that with talents as well for those specific troops in that formation, which is kind of what you were saying as well. Um and just do it that way. I don't know. Well, I'll let Seven P geniuses no, figure 7P, it out. No, Seven P, they can't be that finessed at doing things. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, we I give mean, they, them. You can't even get them to set up a deal where uh, you can make an attack and flip on your uh, shield immediately, or switch your skin while you're on the run. Well, I mean, that's never going to happen. I'm gonna be honest. Like, 
they're never going to do something like that. Um, I mean, we give them simple ideas, and every time they're always like, well, we're worried it's going to break the game because we don't know our own code. <laughs> so, and, so, you why know, am every... I talking to you? We talk to the code, code guy. He knows. Yeah, like literally just talk to the code guy. Hey, would this be possible without breaking the game? It's a simple yes or no. Not Don't give me bullshit excuses of, well, it's a good idea, but we don't want to put the effort into it. Then maybe you need a new code guy. Um, but I mean, like, we give them solutions to problems. And every time it's the same excuse of, well, we're going to have to rewrite the code. It's like, but you recognize this as a problem, yes? And they're like, well, yeah. It's like, okay. So any company that sees a problem, especially one that would, you know, subtract from their potential oh, the money, sales, that would cost, yeah, exactly, cost them money. Because effectively by not doing that or not implementing something, especially in terms of talents, by the time that you're sending, you're looking back at the rotation and you're saying, oh, I'm not going to get the person I get, you just pull back. Compared to if you did that, you're probably going to lose some troops. And let's say you don't have a dealer and you don't farm, what would you have to do? You'd have to buy 7P packs to get resources in terms of a timely manner. Um, God and so they're missing out on a lot of potential money and a lot of potential business, which I talked about this on Gritcher's team earlier, where it's just like they're losing so much money because they're so focused on... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they're so focused on... Like... Whenever they release it, we were talking about gear in this instance, where it's like, listen, they release this gear, and they 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 get a big boom in sales for you know like a month or two, right? Because people are like, oh, new gear, I need it, let's test it. Uh, same thing with new comms, right? They get a big boom, and then it just drops off. There is not continuous sales. They're more worried about the big boom sales than they are continuous sales. They're looking for the rush instead of the cash. Right, exactly. I'm like, long-term wise, you want consistent sales. That's going to get you more money overall. Like, yes, getting big sales where you have like a, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollar month. Fantastic. But, like, if you're then followed that by, like, four or five months where you have, like, maybe 20000 in sales, you're not doing good. Um, and they're just missing out on so many opportunities to get consistent sales because they refuse to listen to their player base. They're not devaluing product after it comes out, um, even after it's been almost three fucking years. Um, and, I mean, feasibly speaking, if they devalued like allocate if they dropped it to you know i mean you can get it cheap in some events now but if they just overall devalued it to like 500 you know how many like you know mid-level to low-level spenders are going to be like okay i'll drop i'll drop 500 for that or um you know some of these other comms or gear like uh, uh, again this goes back to the point of why the fuck is the new gear two thousand dollars um if they dropped that to a thousand, they would have made a lot more sales. I'm gonna be honest. Like I would spend a thousand dollars for some of the new gear that came out, but two thousand, like unless you're a super whale, you're typically not getting it because it's just not worth it. Yeah, essentially they're look, they're trying to get a whale to pay three thousand dollars for something. But if they go over here to the slots and set up the slots right. They get that three thousand out of six three or seven their... people in less yeah. than a few seconds. Yeah, because people people are more willing to drop the five hundred than they are dropping two thousand. Most people yeah. don't have two thousand just laying around that they can spend on a fucking mobile. I game. I certainly don't. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I I fucking don't. It took me damn near the entire year to get a Sun Raven set, and I got mine mostly for free from Cast. How long should they wait to drop prices, though? Because what's going to be well, the good let's, time frame let's, where... Let's talk about the original price in general. So the original price in general, in my opinion, shouldn't be $2,000 for a fictitious game. No, that, that that's ludicrous. Like, I know uh, I play the... I've mentioned this a, a few times, I think, maybe, uh, where I play, like, this Pokemon Go, uh, like, 
game, but it's an off-brand company. You spend a hundred bucks, you gain. And keep in mind, like typically the highest power in those games, uh, at least like right now, is like three mil. You drop a hundred bucks, you're getting a Pokemon that's immediately going to bump you up like to a new level. Uh, you're getting a shit ton of diamonds. Uh, you're typically going up, you know, anywhere from a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand in terms of quote unquote combat power. Which again, the highest player in the game right now is three mil. <laughs> so put two and two together, right? Uh, you've already bumped yourself up to a new ladder in the game, and you get a shit ton of uh, diamonds. You get a shit ton of stuff that will help you. Um, promote your quote-unquote Pokemon, uh, you know, and it just it overall helps you a shit ton. And they give free diamonds and shit away all the time. Like, you're typically getting anywhere from, like, three to 600 diamonds a day for free. Um, they also have this um, weekly, uh, weekly, sorry, monthly pack that you can get for twelve ninety nine, And... You get a thousand diamonds a day. You also get ten of the evolution shards that you need um, for like the super rare Pokemon's that you can then turn into. It's it's a lot to explain. I'd, I'd have to show you the game, but anyways, super value product. So you're getting in terms for twelve ninety nine, you're getting thirty thousand diamonds. You're also getting um, so it's ten times thirty. You're getting three hundred of the red shards, which means you can get. 8, 16, 24. You can almost get four of, you know, um, for the super rare uh, Pokemon that you need to give it a star, and you only typically need two. Uh, so you're automatically getting a star off of that, which increases your combat power by another, like, 50,000. Um, it's just, it's fucking insane. Like, I play other mobile games, and you spend 100 bucks, you typically go up another, like, ring in terms of productivity. And in Ark of War, you have to spend thousands of dollars. And that's not including the gold that you have to get to get SEC chests if you don't have them to get the crafting gear, not including the amount of time you're having to, you know, waste to get this gear to craft the gear in the first place. Then you have to get bots in order to increase the level, which is even more money because they don't allow you to upgrade it past level 40 without specific bots which they don't make a way to get those bots without going through events. And you're spending... Uh, I, I, hell, the, the last Christmas event, it was still... what Wasn't it like you buy um, a mill gold, you get one of the 45 bots, or was it a 50 bot or something? It's 45. Yep. No, it was... A, that, no, it was... No, I don't remember those even being in there. No, it was. It was underneath the fucking Santa Claus. Um, huh. I, I can't remember. 40, I think you get a forty-five bot. It would have yeah, been a forty-five. Yeah, it, it, you're buying a million gold, which, you know, that's ten thousand fucking dollars worth of packs. Ten thousand. Oh, you're talking about gold buy. Uh, okay. Yeah. I you meant like ten thousand pack. <laughs> then yeah, no, 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 it would have no. been it would have been a fifty. It would have been a fifty. Like yeah, but we're gonna up, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars for one fifty bot. Fuck that. That's gonna, it, 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 yeah, like that's fucking insane. And the stats aren't worth it. It's not. Um. So Fuck seventeen needs day. to do a serious reevaluation of their game because that that's fucking bullshit. If I was a new player, and keep in mind when I joined in, level thirty was the highest like you could get, and you know, like they had bots to where you could get it for free and you weren't spending tens of thousands of dollars. But with the 50 gear, which they've even said, like, that's the max we're going to get, which good on them. But it, there's no way to feasibly get it without spending thousands of dollars, you know, assuming you get it through, you know, means. Uh, have, means. Have y'all talked about the update yet? What update? Uh, go to the game. They're releasing an infantry com with a new core skill. And they Thanks, fix the uh, mechanics for weenies. Uh, you have to have a low-level capital to attack a higher-level capital. Let's go! They listened! 
I'm I'm hoping that means you can't have a level one capital and attack a level three capital though. No, I think you have to have the previous. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that you gotta have a level two to attack a level three, and then you gotta have a level three to attack with a level four. And I hope that works with the fucking border as well. <laughs> You'll just scroll all the way down. It's it's probably <laughs> I know where it is. I'm, I'm not getting rid of all the now new. only guys <laughs> that have low level capitals can attack. Uh, Go down, Yoda. Go down, Yoda. It's in the new version. New version, right there. Oh, you 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 scrolled past it, buddy. It's about safe it new version. There you go. <laughs> and an infantry commander, Matt, who has a core skill. So this is the new. Zachary. This is the new god. So it's an infantry. The, so this is the Zach of imagery. Yeah. Although they half listen to our weenie problem. That that doesn't specify anything about gates. Alright, so, so I yeah, think but it we're... doesn't do me a damn bit of good when it, eight, well, eight servers don't... playing at the same time. A low level being able to go up to the next level of a capital. Whoo! And yeah. that was fine in the first cast, but not not now. Well, here, no. let me, let me and, this way. The weenies are still going to be a problem because. Yeah, in, in gates. In the high, higher level of things, because if you do ally with another guild, they're more than likely going to have a level one capital on their side of their Cassetan. And then it can still, and I'm saying this from the the, the example of ROI EXE from that one Cassetan way back when. To where ROI would not have been affected by sending weenies. So it kind of it kind of combats it. It's like a 50-50. They like half-assed combated it. And I feel like that's a really good way to kind of go about it. But at the same time, we don't know if low level capitals to attack. Well, yeah, I mean, if you capital, own half the map, you can give a level one cap. And it's just, you know, again, they half listened. Yeah. The it, main it was issue wasn't the cap thing. battles. It wasn't, it, it honestly it really was wasn't the, the cap battles. battles. It was the gate battles. That's where the issue was. Um, I mean, it, they weren't really using weenies and caps. They they were using it in gates to hold people back. And so they half listened to the issue. And even then, if it is where they could own a level one capital and smack Senekin, why, for weenie support, uh, they didn't really fix the issue. Because by the time you get to Senekin, typically one guild owns half the map. They can afford to give up a level one cap in order to get the weenies. Yep. Although... So it just changes the strategy. They would have to... Yeah, I was about to say, it, it makes it to where once you get to zone 3 and you get into zone 4, then that's when you send your weenie guild to zone 1. You know, they take it and then they have to move the fort all the way back up, which takes like a day or two. So, like, it's not that big of a difference. If it, Assuming that's the case. Assuming it's where if the, you even own a level 1 cap, you can attack in weenie Seneca or like a level 3. I feel like it needs to be in order to weenie in that zone, you have to own the pre at least the previous zone's capital. That way, like they would have to own a level three capital to weenie in, let's say Senecan, or they would have to own a level two to weenie in, you know, zone three. So I, I they half-assed this. So how would you, how would you incorporate that for like the gates? Like, it's very possible, though, like I was saying, it was very possible that you still have to have a level one to attack a gate. Or, you know, like the higher end gates. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I and mean, that, I mean, that, that, would be... that would make the most sense. You have to own the previous cap in order to attack the gate. But the issue is. They they completely left gates out of it. It's only for capitals. So that's that's See, the but issue. It, it wouldn't so, it wouldn't necessarily be fair to only have one ability. If so, in my in my opinion, it wouldn't necessarily be fair for if you have a cap, you're that's the only person who or that's the only guild that's allowed to attack a gate. Well, the gate battle for the start of it is before the 
capital. Yeah. In your zone one. So I don't Correct. know how that would work. Well, I mean, it's not it's everyone that is in that zone attacks the gate. Is what I'm saying. Like in zone two, you have the cap, right? If you get the cap, you get the gate. In order for, let's say, whoever your opponent is in the other slot, assuming you have another opponent, they wouldn't be able to technically attack the gate. Which, yes, is a little unfair, but it forces them to fight for the capital instead, right? If everybody in that zone can attack the gate, though, that really doesn't fix the issue. It doesn't fix the weenie problem. So I get what you're saying where it would be unfair, but at the same point, I also see where it's invoking potentially more attack. Because if you lost the zone 2 cap first, it's only right that whoever got the zone 2 cap gets to keep the gate until you steal the cap. Because, I mean, otherwise you're just going to yoink it out when nobody's watching, which, you know, is part of the cash strat, of course, especially if you're a low-level guild. Um, But the main issue would then be weenies. Both sides could use weenies in the gate. But when even comes, if they don't own the cap, but then even though this already happens, but even more so, this would happen in the sense of being completely locked out of this one, so they wouldn't have any chance whatsoever to get to the higher monsters, higher. I mean, tiles. most of the time, if if you lose the zone two cap, you're not getting into zone four, anyways. Let's but, be honest, but, let, but let's take it this far, okay? So before south is able to attack north or vice versa. The potential to get at least one arc into the final zone so you can you know member call into that zone is a lot better still and before it goes into you know a hundred percent anarchy and north can hit south south can hit north well let me put it this way as resistance did mention gate fights happen before the cap right so it's not that they don't have a chance to not get into the next zone. If they lose the gate and then still don't get the zone 2 cap in this instance, so let's just say hypothetically, they're typically going to get locked out no matter what, right? So there is a chance to get that gate, get in the zone 3, so on and so forth, without needing the cap. Because the gate fights are always before the capital fights. Right. So... There's a chance that they're not locked out. They well, have a chance to fight for the, the gate. Question too. So, if you were going to limit it to whoever owns the cap can fight the gate, hypothetically, is that going to be the guild that owns the cap, or is it going to be the server yes. from the guild? That it it the would cap? have to be the guild in order to kill the weenie issue. Because right now, if the one guild from the server opens up the gate, then anybody from the server can go through that gate. Well, it's it's not that they can't go through the gate. It's that, that they can't attack the gate. Okay. Is what we're asking for. So they can still, like, if your guild, your server can still go to zone 4 if you get to zone 4. What we're asking for is to get rid of other guilds being able... Uh, let me specify other guilds weenies. other guilds from the, the same guild, old guild no others correct and get rid of um not even like that really just get rid of the guilds from the same server being able to attack if that makes sense okay, that's so what I, we're mainly okay, asking i can for. i can see it from like so you have your server there's really no point in terms of a gate battle for anybody else in your server other than whatever powerhouse no. guild to attack that gate no okay i can see the um you know the value in that statement there okay yeah i to mean where, uh, it's I, literally I can see it that way so where you yeah, have to well, that's you'd have to construct like a weaning situation from another server that happens to be on your side of the map or opposite correct map, but you'd have to do some more fidangling into getting that mm -hmm. support correct so, so the yeah the the main ask was not so much to prevent other guilds from just uh, i mean because otherwise you're going to get no battles in like zone two or zone three if you do that it was to in turn to potentially eliminate at least a major portion of the weenie issue 
especially if let's say you're allied with a guild across the map you're not going to get weenies until sent right Right. either way but if you're both allied on the same area theoretically speaking you could still weenie but it would cut down on the mass amount of weenies let's say for example not trying to shit on exe here before anyone comes at me i'm just using this as an example 780 right they got a pretty decent amount of weenie guilds with a lot of active members. Uh, same thing with FBI or DZG or CNJ. They have typically at least one or two, if not three or four weenie guilds specifically for that purpose, right? Right. And I'll, I'll openly admit too, Earl, I had at least two, two guilds that were specifically for weenies. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's mostly people's alts. Uh, typically no, after the first one, once you get, uh, not that we support alternate <laughs> use of arcs, um, but I mean, after you get that first, because normally you have a training guild, and then that's when you start getting into weenies, uh, when you reach that third guild, fourth guild point, whatever. Um, but with specifically, in order to cut out at least one server, just being able to spam three or four guilds of weenies, to make it to where at most you're getting one guild of weenies. Right. And well, that's the other thing too. So hypoth this is the other argument that I felt was very much necessary for Cassetan. If you align yourself with another server, guild, whatever, if I own the gate and you're my ally, like official ally, because you both have to like negate that ally. You know what I mean? Yeah, you shouldn't be able to attack. You- well, one, uh, you shouldn't be able to attack each other. Two, if I own the gate, you should be able to go through the gate. Or vice versa. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. None of this, oh, like, yes, yes. trading off handshake thing. Like, if I own the gate, you should be able to go through the gate. Because we've aligned ourselves. We're allies now. We are the same guild, essentially, for this moment. The goals right. are the same. I should, if I own the cap, you own the cap, which is how it's structured. If, in a sense, if I well, own I mean the same border, thing. If I own the gate, you own the border. or yeah, yeah, they, you know, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, um, because that that yeah. does cause its own discord and trying to like, well, we want to get people into the fourth, but if we try to switch now we won't be able to switch later and then if we switch now you might lose it so you're fucked yeah um yeah no i agree they they should be able to move between um the only issue i could see with that is weenies again um which i think is what they're trying to cut down on you know in like other zones to give potentially the smaller guilds a quote-unquote chance um but yeah, so the, the the main point of what we were asking for isn't, hey, make it to where other servers can't attack the gates, but make it to where people from your own server cannot just weenie the fuck out of your gate or cap. Which is why it's like, if you own cap one, gate one, you know, cap two, gate two. So you know how fucked up this would be too? I'm going to throw this out there and be like, fuck you. All right, because I'm sure somewhere somebody would do it. So, huh? Let me put this. I'm gonna throw this curveball at you, okay? So you're saying that you know, <laughs> server 780, anybody on that server they can't provide you know, quote unquote, weenie support to a, a gate that or border that whatever powerhouse guild in terms of this one exe would be able to or holds in that moment. Okay. So who's to say? Okay. Because you do, you are. I think you're able to see everybody that's going to be on your cast of 10, right? Before it starts? Uh, typically 24 hours before. Okay. So you got yeah. 24 hour time frame to go and throw at least one arc over to a, another server, start a guild, throw all your other arcs into that, or weenie arcs into that guild. And now you have a weenie arc into. That maybe like one or two potentially just to kind of get you over the border. I mean that's fine, but that's the, send the that's a lot more work. Somebody, I, I get what you're saying. I guarantee you. And you know what? That would be okay with me if they're willing to waste, <clears throat> you know, 
the at least 80 jump to do that and take the time to build up the fort because they're gonna have to build another fort in the cast in order to do that right and waste the resources to do that just to weenie you know what go for it i feel like <laughs> if if they did what we actually wanted weenie goats are going to be no more and that's gonna then gonna be like well what is our purpose we have no purpose we're not we get you know nothing from Cass and gc we're you know we're a weenie guild we're not really doing that well so we're not getting gc rewards either right i feel like and this is going to be a hot take before somebody comes at me this is going to be a hot take i'm gonna just say it right now right now we don't really have a lot of middle ground in terms of guilt and i feel most can agree with that it's either you're a kind of lower guild yeah you're either yeah exactly you're you're either in a top guild or you're in a low guild there there is like very few quote unquote medium guilds like if you looked at the top 32 in you know this last one like it it was fucked like in the last gc like it was insane um yeah like if you look at that you know realistically speaking the only ones that normally like get up there you know like lks typically wouldn't make it if you know we had the same number of guilds as we had like a year ago right like they're they normally don't make top 32 or saw normally doesn't make top 32 or gru or uh R-O-B. svw what, or Pirates? rob what are they yeah Who or are they? <laughs> I, I don't know, but like Highgard, you know, or HGD. Like who is that? I've never seen that. I've seen a bit. Yeah, or I've seen Viking. Uh, fucking TFC. Who the fuck's that? ROI people. Oh my god! Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, or CVP. Like there are a lot of guilds that you normally would not see in top thirty-two that are in top thirty-two because of the simple fact of a lot of the middle guilds all absorbed or merged. Yes. And so we're seeing a lot of guilds that normally would even a year ago would have never made a top 32 like they'd be lucky to get top 80 are now in top 32 yeah um so let me ask you all this real quick you can a, i finish you're on can 780 I... hold on go ahead go ahead Remy. In, yeah. i i just want to finish my main point before i forget it and we go off topic um main point here is if we eliminate the weenie issue entirely a lot of those players aren't going to get rewards from Cass. They're not going to get rewards from GC. What are we going to start seeing? Going to start seeing middle guilds start popping up again. Yeah, I see CAN. They, they shouldn't be in top 32. But anyways, <laughs> it, it literally, like, these no fucking, it, you know, easy one normally gets rough, c- c- close to top 32, if not top 32, so I, I'm okay with that. Um, but anyways, um, we would start seeing middle guilds start popping back up again, and we would see a lot of these, if like if we look at this current bracket right now, we'd see a lot of these knocked out like instantly. Because um, honestly, most of these are fucking weenie guilds for bigger guilds. Because literally it's big guilds, weenie guilds, and low guilds. So we're seeing a lot of this going on. And so if we eliminate the weenie issue, there's they have no purpose. What are they going to do? They're going to get pissed that they're not getting rewards. They're going to go ahead and start leaving planet, trying to go to other planets, forming new guilds, or joining other low guilds to boost them up to <clears throat> medium guilds. And we'll start seeing the return of medium guilds. Well, Because right now it's... Here's the other thing too, like SSS was not a contender and all of a sudden they became a contender and uh, once again the only reason why they won is because all of our bigs moved you know exe right before yeah Galactic. yeah but right we would because won, they they, but... they 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 shouldn't have made it as far as they did they literally yeah. got easy fucking matchups um anyways uh, but like you, even, you... Uh, even us in sxd we're probably one of the last holdouts of the middle guilds that exist yeah, yeah I, I, between you and LKS, you're the only two quote unquote like middle guilds that yep. I would view as being left. Like, if we look at the rest of this bracket, it's all weenie guilds. It's either weenie guilds or super guilds. Um, yep. 
And so, like, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, right now, Ooh. there's not a lot of options to move to. There's really not, because all the big guilds are filled up. They're not taking new members, especially if you're, like, in the 200, 300 mil range. Good luck. Like, unless you've got some crazy-ass fucking gear on that arc, you're not getting in. And so it's either you're stuck being a weenie and getting some rewards from Cass, because if you do enough being a weenie, they might let you in for final rewards, right? Or you're just fucked. Yeah. So I feel like if we got rid of the weenie issue, yes, a lot of people are going to be upset at first. And we're going to see a lot of people start dispersing, creating their own guilds again. And we're going to start seeing more life on servers, especially the medium to low servers. We're going to start seeing a lot more life because there's a lot of medium servers. Don't get me wrong. There's just not a lot of medium guilds. So they would start dispersing out to back to the servers. We wouldn't have literally right now we have like four super servers and the rest are low to mid at mid at best. So if they all start dispersing out, we'll start seeing a lot of the lower servers come up to medium. We'll start seeing some of the medium come up to high. And the super servers, like, I mean, they're probably going to say the same, to be honest with you. Um, but it would create a lot more versatility and it would create a lot more competition across multiple servers that currently have no competition. Because let's be honest, most of the servers are dead right now because of the simple fact that everyone's in a super fucking guild. Or they all converge for like cast or GC for a super guild. So they just all leave planet and the server just dies. And everyone that gets left behind gets fucked. Yeah. 100%. So um, unless anyone has anything else to say about that, like I feel like getting rid of the weenie issue would solve the server issue at least a little bit. It would also solve the GC issue. Like in versus GC, I th we only faced. Super guilds twice. The rest of them were just bullshit. Like, it, it wasn't even close to a competition. So, you know, I, I'm just saying, like, I feel like it would help bring up some of that competitive. Because realistically speaking, like, if you're in a super guild, you're typically getting top four at the end of GC no matter what. And otherwise, you're just hoping to be in top 32. I, I would I, say I just... at, least, at least top um, eight. Yeah, I mean, I, top eight, yeah. Because, I mean, like, anybody yeah, in this, top eight. this section of the bracket, like, they they have players. The the players are there. They just probably got outplayed. Yeah, literally, literally sorry, that's what sorry, it was. This one, sorry, this bracket right here. But, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, in, you know, if we look at TMB, they have, I believe they have three weenie guilds right now. Um, If they were to fix a weenie issue, Boom, that's a shit ton of players, especially Western players, mind you, who are already wanting to leave. That's a shit ton of Western players coming back into our market. Because right now, recruiting's at a dead still. Like, yeah, most of the guilds have been merged up or put into, you know, training guilds or weenie guilds at this point. Like, they're, the recruiting market is non existent. Or there's such and, a des you know, difference in language that even if you tried like it just doesn't work out like we we essentially yeah, attempted too. to merge with a dominantly german guild uh just because we have a lot of euro players or we did in our life and it yeah. just didn't work out there was a conflict of language barrier Lang yeah, language yeah language and their temperament they have a certain way they do things and if you don't do it that well, you're, you're, this, you're, you're. this specific guild also is still I stuck on. Chinese. Well, they were still stuck on the whole like it's all of us or none of us, and we're like, wait a minute, that's not how this works in terms of a merge, and that's kind of why it fell apart. Was like, you got a sixty million arc where we have three hundred million arcs in our sister guild that we want to bring up. Your sixty million should go over to the sister, sister so we can bring up the three hundred. But they're like, no, fuck you, it's all of us or none. I'm like, well, then I guess it's none of you. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, recently, like, I just feel like this would solve a lot of the issues in terms of guilds right now in the game. It would get rid of the weenie issue. It would bring back life into, you know, a lot of servers because they're going to spread out. It would mean that recruiting is going to be viable again. 
There's a lot of pros to doing it. And then, you know, yes, people are going to get pissed out missing out on max rewards, but I mean, it even, you know, feasibly speaking, all the Western guilds have all agreed that weenies are a problem and need to go away. Even the ones that massively use weenies have said, this is kind of fucked. This needs to go away because it's just boring. Well, it's not only that it's boring. It's like whoever gets the structure in there first, you're like, well, this is fucked. We're done. Yeah, you're not getting through. Like, it's just... So I, I will open to admit, too, like, on my end, it's like as soon as I see the weenies, I'm like, well, I guess we're done. Yeah. There goes there goes. Yeah, the yeah literally. <laughs> So, like, I know EXE has said it multiple times as well, where they have been, hey, weenies need to go. And, you know, they, they use a decent amount of weenies. Um, I know ROI agreed with that, too. And uh, I know you saw that. They they Before they merged it to EXE, they agreed with it as well. Yeah. First agreed with it. Even FBI said that weenies need to go. And they're literally the main reason that they win all the time is weenies. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> so... and, and even though we agree that they need to go, that doesn't mean we're not going to continue to utilize it until it's gone. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's that's the point I'm saying. Almost like, all the major we're never, builds. We're never going to get a gentleman's agreement out of everybody. It's not like playing like, OK, so I play gunfight on Call of Duty where it kind of gives you a random set of guns each match. Yeah. And there's times to where you you have a gun and fists. So we'll I'll type in the chat really quick, like oh fists only, and like. But dude, I love fists only. Fifty fifty, they see it or they hear me say it on voice, you know, and we get like a good fisty cuffs for a couple of rounds. But we're just not gonna get that gentleman's agreement in this game. I just don't ever foresee that happening. There's, for what little rewards we get, there's so much on the line for it. There's no reason for anybody to give any kind of concession to that. Yeah, I want to know about this, right? Yo, you're yeah. in EXE server, right? Yeah. Can you go to your server wall thing? Uh, the server power sphere. I'll send to that. Wait, you what? Separately. I'm not gonna post that. Yeah, right now. don't. Yeah, don't don't do well, that on I'm, stream. Yeah, I'm not. I'm PPP not gonna... is on that server, right? Yes. Yeah, PPP is on that server. Yes, and oh, they're in top they're thirty-two 40? as well. They're right at 40 billion power. What if something happens between EXE and PPP and they decide they want to fight back against them? How does that work if it's later in cast and we're trying to come into zone one, PPP is trying to take zone one wall, then EXE is hitting zone one as well? How is that going to well, work? The whole, the whole point of cast it's in is to bring a server together. So even even if you don't like somebody in your server, the whole point of Cassitan is like, okay, for these 30 days, we're frenemies. So right. I understand where Typically. you're going with that, but at the same time, it contin- that like goes against the whole concept of what Cassitan is supposed to be. Right. And I mean, even then, typically, and this is from my multiple Casses, typically whoever is like, the planet like owner guild like they'll reach out and say hey do you want an alliance we need an alliance for cast and then that guild will send over their fighters to the main guild yes and then they'll send they'll send whatever like their lower power players to the alliance guild and so they'll get all the biggest fighters in the main guild in order to achieve this alliance for cast so it leaves little to no opportunity to suddenly do that. Let's say they got pissed or whatever. Yeah. No, I was just saying we seen it last Castan with LKS tried to fight back against DXE. Uh, well, we, that didn't go well. <laughs> we lost FTW last cast. I mean, they didn't do shit. I was they didn't do shit. They didn't fight back or anything, but we still. Well, no, they were trying to fight back. They were fighting us in caps and gates, and they just lost horribly. I just never caught those battles, I guess. No, you didn't. Um, but, I mean, feasibly speaking, typically a, a sister guild is not going to stand a very good chance against the main guild. <laughs> um, typically. And if they do, you probably need to reevaluate your main guild, is what I'm going to say about that. I 100% agree. 
I mean, there's a reason why there's yeah, no, but when you get two forty, <laughs> when you get two forty bill guilds fighting against one eighty mil, uh, what are they, a hundred bill now? Guild, it kind of evens itself out power wise. Again, well, yeah, into, but that I goes mean... into the semantics of who's the main fighters, who's actually participating, what are they bringing to the table in that participation to actually be a nuisance to where you could have a one point whatever billion guild as a whole, but because this the mother guild has a three billion arc on its own, they're right. enough, they're enough to defeat everybody in that one point eight billion guild as a whole. Right, and I see what you're also saying, Resistance, but, like, again, that goes into the concept. In order for them to attack the gate, they have to own the cap, which is going back to the main point. So, yes, like, let's say in this instance it was first versus EXE and PPP was acting up and we backed EXE to zone one, which I don't think would happen. But hypothetically speaking, right, we backed them all the way to zone one. I was just using that as an example because we have both of us here. Right, and I'm going to go with it. So hypo- th- this is hypothetically speaking. We backed him down to zone one, and PPP got pissed for whatever reason, even though I'm pretty sure it's owned by one of the people in the council, so I doubt that they would quote-unquote revolt anyways. Um, but feasibly speaking, so in order for PPP to in turn help us if they really wanted to fuck EXE in the way that you're talking about, they would have to own the zone one cap. Which, if EXE was pushed to zone one, there's no way PPP's getting it. And so, you know, reasonably speaking, PPP could only help us with the zone one cap, which is going to be in the last week of cast. So by that point, it's really not going to have an impact. Exactly. And even then, at that point, like, losing the cap one isn't the biggest deal in the world, usually. If you're aligned, if you're aligned correctly with other another guild. Okay, we'll take it back to last cast again. T and B recruited LKS to fight EXE. I think it was T and B. Right, and that's that's fine. But again, going to the main point, LKS really only tile hunted. Let's be honest. Well, what I'm taking from is what. What comes from that? What good is it having another guild and another server if it really doesn't do anything? Well, nothing. It, well, from what I was saying earlier, in terms of like, if hypothetically they were to go through what Rumi was saying, in terms of you can't attack anything with whatever parameters are, if you're the same guild or the same server, you can't attack whatever. You know what I mean? Like, same server, you can't attack the border if. Occup- whatever occupy there's a lot there that would have to work out that verbiage but anyways the whole point of me bringing up somebody jumping a weenie to another server that you know is going to be on your side of Cassetan, um was mostly just to say like that that's a loophole to get around whatever parameters they would say in terms of if you're on the same server then you can't attack the border if already owned by your server Which would also negate anything else from that fact of matter of being helped to a you know enemy server because if you can't attack the if if that play was in if that that verbiage was in there to where you wouldn't be helpful to any outside server to that extent because you can't attack it anyways and you can't forfeit it so yeah it would cut weenies out entirely no matter what. Like, again, the only weenies you would get is potentially from your ally, and that's if they own the cap. Exactly. So, like, to attack, like, the zone three gate, right, they would have to either own Senekin or owns the zone three cap. So, it makes it really hard for any guild to really weenie. Because, like, let's say one part of the alliance is stuck in zone 3. They can't take the zone 3 cap. They can't attack the zone 3 gate, which means they can't get into zone 4. That means they can't weenie scent. They also can't weenie the other guild's zone 4 gate. Does that make sense? 
Or am I tripping? No, I, I, I get what you're saying. So yeah, if we take all that into account, it's going to cut weenies out basically to non-existent. Unless both of you somehow get into zone 4. Yeah. Which is going to be hard, because if you own Scent, they can't attack your zone 4 gate. And if you own the zone 3 cap, they can't attack your zone 4 gate. So that means you're not having to worry about your gate on the other side, and you're not having to worry about weenies from either side, because neither of them can attack the gate. <laughs> and they can't defend each other's gate like that. Exactly. Does that does that kind of touch on what you were talking about there, Resistance? Yeah. Well, boys, it is a work night, so I am going to call it at this point, because I can't be up all night. <laughs> but I was glad to uh, hang out for a little bit and talk, as it's been a month or so since I've been able to stream. And uh, really appreciate you guys joining, and everybody that was in chat. Thank you. Reggie, even though you were just a viewer this time. Yeah. Anybody has anything they want to say? Now's the time. Fuck you, Nebraska. Fuck you, Nebraska. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming that has something to do with March Madness. <laughs> Ooh, I don't no. know. No. A anyways, I also have to go to bed. I have to wake up and less than eight hours so yeah, that's like gonna be sleep. up in three <laughs> yeah well y'all have a good night yeah but the only thing i need is 23 days to get past so i can s quest by ds and 7p hold up their agreement to reset the monsters and cast they said they do the next cast.